Democracy. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Yellow is the color of the sun. It's light, it's warmth. Yellow is a light bulb, illumination, inspiration. Yellow is my promise to even the odds for kids through education. Yellow Hab is about the students embracing and engaging the yellow lens of possibility. We are reimagining education, and to do that, we need like-minded partners. Cisco is driven by innovation and imagination, but our purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. Cisco shares Yellow Hab's vision of inclusivity, and we are so happy to announce our partnership to provide state-of-the-art networking, collaboration, and security tools for Yellow Hab and its students. Partnering with companies like Cisco that really believe in what we're doing is what we're all about. And we're just getting started, so let's make it happen. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partner's technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely, delivering power over Ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco wireless and DNA spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hybrid work is here. It's there. It's everywhere. But for someone to be able to work from here or here, there has to be someone here making sure everything is safe, secure, consistent. So go ahead, log in from here. Dial in from here. Sit in from here. Assured that someone is here with a view of everywhere, ready to fix anything, anytime, anywhere even here. That's because nobody, and I mean nobody, makes hybrid work work better. Cisco, the bridge to possible. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges, taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing, and security into account. And together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote, no diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here and here with her and him and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. 
Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house. Zero carbon, zero waste. Because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Yellow is the color of the sun. It's light. It's warmth. Yellow is a light bulb, illumination, inspiration. Yellow is my promise to even the odds for kids through education. Yellow Hab is about the students embracing and engaging the yellow lens of possibility. We are reimagining education, and to do that, we need like-minded partners. Cisco is driven by innovation and imagination, but our purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. Cisco shares Yellow Hab's vision of inclusivity, and we are so happy to announce our partnership to provide state-of-the-art networking, collaboration, and security tools for Yellow Hab and its students. Partnering with companies like Cisco that really believe in what we're doing is what we're all about. And we're just getting started, so let's make it happen. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partner's technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely, delivering power over ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco wireless and DNA spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hybrid work is here. It's there. It's everywhere. But for someone to be able to work from here or here, there has to be someone here making sure everything is safe, secure, consistent. So go ahead, log in from here. Dial in from here. Sit in from here. Assured that someone is here with a view of everywhere. Ready to fix anything, anytime, anywhere. Even here. That's because nobody, and I mean nobody, makes hybrid work work better. Cisco, the bridge to possible. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges. Taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing and security into account. And together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote. No diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. 
Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here, and here, with her, and him, and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house. Zero carbon, zero waste. Because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Yellow is the color of the sun. It's light, it's warmth. Yellow is a light bulb, illumination, inspiration. Yellow is my promise to even the odds for kids through education. Yellow Hab is about the students embracing and engaging the yellow lens of possibility. We are reimagining education, and to do that, we need like-minded partners. Cisco is driven by innovation and imagination, but our purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. Cisco shares Yellow Hab's vision of inclusivity, and we are so happy to announce our partnership to provide state-of-the-art networking, collaboration, and security tools for Yellow Hab and its students. Partnering with companies like Cisco that really believe in what we're doing is what we're all about. And we're just getting started, so let's make it happen. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partner's technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely, delivering power over Ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco wireless and DNA spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hybrid work is here. It's there. It's everywhere. But for someone to be able to work from here or here, there has to be someone here, making sure everything is safe, secure, consistent. So go ahead, log in from here. Dial in from here. Sit in from here, assured that someone is here with a view of everywhere, ready to fix anything, anytime, anywhere, even here. That's because nobody, and I mean nobody, makes hybrid work work better. Cisco, the bridge to possible. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. 
But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges, taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing, and security into account. And together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote, no diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here and here with her and him and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house, zero carbon, zero waste because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Yellow is the color of the sun. It's light, it's warmth. Yellow is a light bulb, illumination, inspiration. Yellow is my promise to even the odds for kids through education. Yellow Hab is about the students embracing and engaging the yellow lens of possibility. We are reimagining education, and to do that, we need like-minded partners. Cisco is driven by innovation and imagination, but our purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. Cisco shares Yellow Hab's vision of inclusivity, and we are so happy to announce our partnership to provide state-of-the-art networking, collaboration, and security tools for Yellow Hab and its students. Partnering with companies like Cisco that really believe in what we're doing is what we're all about. And we're just getting started, so let's make it happen. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partner's technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely delivering power over ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco wireless and DNA spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hybrid work is here. It's there, it's everywhere. But for someone to be able to work from here or here, there has to be someone here, making sure everything is safe, secure, consistent. So go ahead, log in from here, dial in from here, sit in from here, assured that someone is here with a view of everywhere, ready to fix anything, anytime, anywhere, even here. That's because nobody, and I mean nobody, makes hybrid work work better. Cisco, the bridge to possible.
Hey everyone and welcome to Cisco Live 2023 Amsterdam. We are so excited to be here. We will be joined by thousands of customers and partners to make this a truly unforgettable experience for you wherever you're tuning in from. I'm Cedric. Hi, I'm Rob Boyd. I'm Steve. And I'm Nish and we are your hosts. And we are all, all in, in for Cisco Live 2023 Amsterdam. We will be bringing you the inspiring energy of Cisco Live every day. Thousands of technology innovators will be gathering here for a truly transformational experience. So join us for inspiring keynotes, thought-provoking innovation talks, and illuminating interviews. We have a jam-packed three days, so let's take a sneak peek so you don't miss out on anything. Experience the latest in technology here in the world of solutions. You can get a glimpse of the future. You can visit Cisco Partners and really feel that electric energy of Cisco Live. I'm here at the Cisco Showcase, which is the place to learn more about Cisco's latest and greatest innovations and demos. The most creative individuals in the industry will be meeting here in Meeting Village to network, to share ideas, and to learn from each other. You'll hear from Cisco leaders and industry guests as they highlight what's new and share ideas on how to transform your business in the Innovation Talks Theatre. Check out the Technical Solutions Clinics and DevNet Zone. Meet some of the best and brightest minds in the world of IT. Also in the hub is the Sustainability Zone. This is where you'll get the full Cisco story all about circular IT, all in one place. And of course, our keynotes. Hear from Cisco's executive leadership and learn about new technology and innovations. And don't forget to join us for our closing keynote with Pierre Luigi Colina, the world's greatest football referee. Throughout the conference, we're going to be joined by some of Cisco's top experts right here in Cisco TV studios. And you can get involved too. Join the conversation at hashtag Cisco Life EMEA. And join us on CiscoLive.com for the full enhanced viewing experience. Stay tuned for three days of inspiration, learning, and fun. Cisco Live 2023 Amsterdam. We're all in. Are, Are you? you? Well, hello friends and Cisco family all over the world. Welcome to our streaming broadcast coming at you from Cisco Live 2023 Amsterdam here at the beautiful Rye. My name is Steve Molter. I'm one of your four broadcast hosts here for this streaming program that is running throughout the entire Cisco Live conference. This really is the place to be for inspiration, for elevation, for education, motivation, and for conversation. All right, so how do you join that conversation? Well, all week long, you're going to do that using hashtag Cisco Live EMEA, E M E A. You can also join us on social media at, at Cisco Live EMEA. You can watch the stream at CiscoLive.com all week long or at Cisco. Com. We want to interact with you on all these platforms. We invite you to do that. Now, we are 100% sold out here in Amsterdam. More than 10,000 all around us here at the RAI, plus our IT leadership program, our executive symposium. We are streaming live to you 24 hours a day, all the way up to the end, whenever and wherever you may be. Now, as you can see from the energy that's all around us, we are all in here at Cisco. We hope all of you are all in with us as well. You and you have been all in, you've been keeping your apps running, you've been keeping your connections connected and your companies adapting and growing. You've been keeping everything everywhere secure the entire way. So we know you are all in and that's exactly why we are all in with you. All right, so once again, look at what's happening. People are meeting one another, they're greeting each other, they're sharing new ways of solving the world's biggest challenges inside our companies and outside in the world at large. And so much of this story here at Cisco Live is really about hybrid. Today's hybrid is about so much more than just solving remote work challenges. It's about taking advantage of all of the opportunities to empower your teams. So your team at home, your team in the office, your team anywhere they happen to be. How do we empower them securely? How do we give them access to all those capabilities to perform at their very best? Well, all week long here in Amsterdam, we have got such a great team of Cisco experts showing everybody exactly how Cisco transforms businesses. How do we make work work better? So for example, right next door in the world of solutions, more than 150 demos and interactive experiences right over there 
all the different products that we're going to take you on tours of. We're going to show it to every single piece of it. You're going to see it for yourself firsthand. So many different ways that Cisco allows you to really immerse yourself in work from home, work from office, work anywhere environments. We've got all the latest WebEx solutions, our full menu of hybrid work technologies. We will take you on a virtual tour of Cisco Pen 1. You're going to see a, a truly intelligent, sustainable, modernized, secure work environment. And it all leads up to our opening keynote. And according to my clock here, it's kicking off, oh my gosh, in just about 40 minutes. Very exciting. Like I said, I'm one of four of your broadcast hosts, and I want to introduce you to another one. In fact, our newest host here on the broadcast team, and that is Cedric DeValder, who is sitting right over there. Hello, Cedric. Hey there, Steve. How are you doing? I'm doing great today, my friend. You are right next door in Studio B. I am here in Studio A. We'll go back and forth between the two. Cedric, it is so good to have you here on the team. What has really just gotten you motivated, inspired, and excited so far? I think, Steve, this is my first Cisco Live, and it's just so great to be here live in Amsterdam in person. And I even wear my, I even wore my Cisco socks for it for this special occasion. But it always feels a little bit like coming home. I started at Cisco about four years and a half um, as an intern in Amsterdam, so it's really great to be back here in this beautiful city. Oh, absolutely. It's good to have you back with it. In fact, I'm going to want to talk to you about that experience, your early experience, Net Academy, which I know was a very important part of your upbringing. We're going to talk uh, about the different ways that you've really embedded with the organization. But give me one quick thing right out of the gate here that's really gotten you excited so far at the show. I think just seeing everyone around, like seeing customers, seeing partners, seeing colleagues uh, from all over the world coming just here to the Rye, um, feeling the excitement, feeling the vibe, I think that's just what I love so far. Oh, it's so great. And again, everybody who's here on the show, you can feel that energy, that dynamic. We are, as I said, right now, according to my clock, uh, coming up at 10 o'clock Central European time, which again, by my register and what I'm looking at, what do we have, 38 minutes or so from now, is our opening keynote. I want to give you a little quick preview. We're going to hear from our president of Cisco EMEA, Wendy Mars, along with Liz Santoni and Jonathan Davidson and uh, Javed Khan, Tom Gillis, Adeli Trombetta. The theme of our event this year, as we've been saying, is all in. All right, what does that mean? Well, all in means compelling innovation. It means the power of IT. It means focusing on meaningful impact within our communities all the different ways that our businesses can drive change and leave a lasting impact for generations to come, right? So here at Cisco, we are all in on creating an inclusive future for all. You'll hear that again and again, and the opening keynote is gonna focus on that. How are we positively impacting a billion people around the world by the year 2025? Wendy Liz, Javed, Tom, Adele, the whole crew, they're gonna show us exactly how to make that happen, and that starts at 10 o'clock Central European time. Now, as soon as that keynote comes to an end, well, we're gonna be waiting for you right back here in the Studio TV, uh, 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 and we're always here. Whenever we go away, we always come back. We're right here in the middle of the hub at the show, and we'll always be here. We're also gonna hear throughout the week from executives, Thousand Eyes, sustainability, uh, and if you miss any of it, don't worry about it. It's completely fine. I know we all have lives. Some of us actually have to sleep from time to time. But you can catch up whenever you would like at CiscoLive.com in our on-demand libraries. And we invite you to check that out, and that way you won't miss a thing. Now, Cedric, as we said a moment ago, uh, you and I, we are only 50% of the broadcast host team here at the show. And I think it is long past time that we bring in our other 50%, our other two cohorts on the broadcast team. And I'm going to start with my fabulous Nish Parker. Hello, Nishy P out in the <laughs> keynote space. How are you, my friend? Hello, Stevie M. Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is Nish Parker. I'm back here at Cisco Live, really excited. So I'm here. I'm with Rob Boyd, fourth host. Come on in, Rob. How are you doing? Hey, we are we are ready. I can remember the microphone. <laughs> you need the mic. Yeah. That's how these things work. It's yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to be bringing everybody at home, lots of guests. Everyone's coming in to join the keynote now, starting just in 45 minutes. Rob, you have a new strategy this year. How are you going to get people to come and talk to I'm us? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> One of the challenges is we, we always want to get a feel from people who are attending here. You know, what is your experience? What's happening? But it that people are very conservative. They don't always want to talk. It's hard to get their attention. I'm not always sure what they're communicating. So I thought I could stand to be a bit more clear. So I'm going to be <laughs> wherever I can. I'm just going to be at the end of the aisle looking, you know, 
<laughs> and if, if somebody shows even half an interest in me, we're on. Do you know what we're I think on. we should do, Rob, is if you're watching from home and you're on CiscoLive.com, there's emojis on the right-hand side. Give us a thumbs up if you would uh, say yes like to Rob. Yeah, we're interested yeah. to see if this Will works. Will you marry me? <laughs> say yes to Rob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Rob, we've been on Cisco, Cisco Live a few times now. What are you most excited about this week? Well, this is finally, although I was surprised at how busy it's been yesterday, because it started earlier than I'd anticipated, or I didn't read my uh, documentation closely enough. But either way, the learning has started for sure. The World of Solutions had opened early, uh, as well as the entire showcase. The, uh, we did the check-in last night, that was for the internal audience, but it's been a lot of stuff already. But today, we get the actual messaging, the what are we gonna do to charge forward? What can we expect? How are we gonna be most efficient this year? How should we refocus our efforts? Whether you be a partner, a customer, an employee uh, at any degree, this is the place a lot of times every year where we start to see stuff coming together. Yeah? For sure, and I know the keynote in particular, there's gonna be so many people that are watching at home. You know, the room is filling up here for people in person. And this is where they really learn about some of the latest trends in the technology industry and what Cisco has to offer as well. So I know that we're gonna be referencing that through the week. It's really gonna anchor the event and really set the theme for all in, yeah. right? Are you all in, Rob? Oh, am I in? <laughs> I'm all in. Well, you know what, I want to ask Steve back in the studio if I've got you, Steve. Um, yeah, happy with you, my friend. I'm concerned about your voice this morning. It wasn't there earlier, but I swear a frog has crept into your voice. Are, are you okay, my friend? It has absolutely, it has absolutely done that. So, uh, uh, look, <clears throat> the frog is here, but it's not going to stop me from having a phenomenal time while we're here. Here's the deal. No. Cold outside, warm inside. Cold outside, warm inside. We're human. That'll do it. We have to do what we have to do, you know? Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, that'll do it. And I always loved your professionalism, your ability to push through. Because frankly, of the four of us here, right, what we have to do is get the show done regardless. There's going to be a lot of changes. We're ready. We got a team behind us that can interact and throw down any direction we need to go. Steve, I think we're taking it back to you at the back in the lobby. Absolutely. Lobby. <laughs> keep, keep finding amazing people out there on the show floor. You have no idea. Once you get into the keynote space, it's incredible how noisy it is out there. So the fact that Nish and Rob can hear anything at all out in that chaotic space as people start to flood in for the opening keynote, it really is a pretty remarkable thing. Um, a bit earlier, I was talking to you about the future of hybrid work, right? Cisco is at the forefront of allowing us to work better within our individual hybrid environments. Well, another big PowerPoint for Cisco is digital transformation. How do we build that new network? How do we transform the business, stay ahead of the competition? Well, Cisco is really helping you reimagine the ways that you do business all week long. Our guests, our attendees are learning how to apply technology to build their new business models and processes and software and systems, everything that allows us to create new customer experiences while we also enable our more advanced business models and really drive that workforce innovation. Well, Cedric is directly next door to me over here in Studio B with a very special guest to talk about transformation and Cisco Hyperflex. So Cedric, uh, who do you have with you over there in Studio B? Yes, hey Steve, hi again. I think I, I kind of have a frog in my, in my throat, I think, you know, I think we might all have it. But yes, I am here and we're gonna learn more about IT transformation, which actually enables expansion, consolidation, and the simplification of management across multiple technologies. And I'm here joined by Benjamin Bubbers. Benjamin, hey, how are you doing? Hi, I'm fine, how are you? I'm doing so great. I'm really excited to be here at Cisco Live. It's great to have you here in the studio, so welcome. Thank you. Is this your first Cisco Live? Have you been here multiple times? The third I'm attending in person the and third time. have done in COVID uh, some virtual. Okay, so you have actually watched our broadcast, which is awesome. Yeah. Great. Um, so you are a systems administrator at the Eon Group. Yeah. Right. Can you tell us a little bit more what that means? Uh, me and my team, uh, we are managing all between uh, the data center network where we are customer up to managed end user computing uh, and all in between from hardware, virtualization with backup, managed active directory, managed servers uh, where application owners uh, may install the applications, Citrix access and up to managed end user devices but all in operational technologies, so just for the colleagues who are managing the energy grids. So when we were talking earlier, we talked about your operations and technology department, right, and that there were some changes going on there. So what led to that? Uh, six years ago, E.ON decided uh, Germany-wide to um, build a 
um, common network management operational center for these uh, OT networks. And every department has got uh, a task to do. Me and my team is doing basic infrastructure, as we say. And that led to consolidating the tasks uh, to different departments. So and getting effort because we are all doing it together. Okay, so you're all in, right yep. there. Um, so you, like, how has Cisco helped you develop that strategy? Uh, we or the other department deployed Cisco ACI over Germany uh, with a multipod installation, and we installed Hyperflex uh, clusters across four different locations, and they are able to talk all in the same network. So we have layer, uh, layer two communication between all our uh, clusters, and I'm able to move a virtual machine just from Rendsburg in North Germany to Dachau in South Germany. So you mentioned Hyperflex in there already. Yeah. Are you using any other Cisco products or solutions to power it up? Uh, we are using Cisco Intersight mm -hmm. uh, to have a view over all clusters and over all our other UCS managed servers. Okay, so it seems like a lot of technical stuff going on, right? Yeah. Um, how do you manage those things? Yeah, it's basically uh, just day two operations, uh, upgrading and maybe expansion. Uh, last year we swapped two clusters because uh, M4 hardware will be going end of uh, life. And yeah, building uh, some more up, managing 11 Hyperflex clusters is as easy as managing two of them because you have all of them in Intersight and I'm able to do it via all. Right. So that was a lot of technical stuff as, as we discussed, right? So you do all of these things, but how does that reflect onto your business? Are you seeing cost reductions? Are you seeing like operational efficiency? We do have much more consolidation onto the servers in the cluster as before. So uh, before we had around 30 virtual machines on three hosts. Now we have uh, 120 machines on six hosts. Uh, so much more, uh, yeah, consolidation on to one server. Mm -hmm. Okay, so much more consolidation. Sustainability is a big part of Cisco, right? It's a big part of the conference here as well. We have a sustainability doing just around the corner. What is Eon Group, what is Eon Group doing today in terms of the sustainability space as a company? Eon uh, will reduce his carbon footprint by electrifying the whole car park and doing uh, renewables on all our buildings. Okay, so you're really in this, you're all in on the sustainability game as well. Definitely. Right, yes. great. Um, so, what do you like the most about our solutions at Cisco and how to integrate at, at the company at Eon? Cisco was from the beginning very helpful, uh, even in the buying process where we have not made the decision, but uh, as the technical um, uh, yeah, colleagues, we looked into the solution and all the sales team uh, helped us very good up to uh, building up and managing this cluster. And even with uh, customer success products, uh, like um, we made a mentored upgrade program back in the days around two or three years ago, where we uh, jumped from one major release to another with all the help from Cisco. So yeah, yeah. So again, I think our marketing team did a really great job in that tagline all in <laughs> because we're all in all over the place, right? Yeah. Um, so thinking like now future wise, what's coming up? What's what's the partnership of Cisco and Eon Group gonna look like in the in the years to come? I think we're even more dive into it. We are uh, building up a new internet access uh, for our environment and we'll do it with Cisco also. Awesome, great. So you mentioned as well, this is your third Cisco live in person. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you had, you were able to like have a wander around already. Um, what are you most excited about to learn at the conference this, this next couple of days? All of them. I always, uh, I'm always interested in getting new infos. Uh, I'm doing the same sessions as the last two times uh, as um, troubleshooting Hyperflex from Chuck perspective. I did that twice okay. and that always helped me out, so I'm attending the third one uh, today. Okay, so it's like a proven track of record, you're yeah. just gonna do it once again. Yeah. Um, so what are you 
other than that, also excited about in terms of like meeting some colleagues? Are there some other people from the Eon group here as well? Definitely meeting all the persons I have met virtually last two or three years, even from Tisco. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you're going to spend some time in our meeting village, probably like Definitely, talking with yes. our experts here. Okay, great. And then, of course, we have a party coming up on Thursday. So I mean, I'm sure I'll see you there as well. Um, so we're just uh, we're just going to like throw it uh, back to Steve. Thank you so much, Benjamin, for being here and for being such a wonderful customer of, uh, of Cisco. So it was good to have you here in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank Steve, we're going to come back to you in the on the other side of the studio. Thank you so much, Cedric. I appreciate it. Great job. Well done. Uh, uh, great interview. Thanks again to Benjamin and to Eon as well for being a part of the event and for helping to kick us uh, uh, off on our day here as we head toward the keynote. Speaking of keynote, we've got some beautiful... Oh, look how beautiful this is. We are getting so excited. We are right now 24 minutes minutes away from our opening keynote at 10 o'clock Central European time. And in just a moment, we're going to go back out to Nish Parker and Rob Boyd, who are out in that keynote space. For those of you just now tuning in at this point, so glad to have you with us. Coming to you live from the Rai, sunshine streaming in. Remember, we want you to join in every part of our conversation. Will it be a part of Cisco Live 2023 Amsterdam? How do you join in? Very simple. Hashtag Cisco Live EMEA, E-M-E-A. And of course, you can also join on social media with at Cisco Live EMEA. And be sure to share the word to everybody. Join the event at CiscoLive.com or Cisco.com. We really do want to hear from every one of you. In fact, our social media team, our great social media team, right back there, directly behind me over here in the social media circle. And they are waiting to respond and to reach back out to all of you as soon as you reach out to all of us. Like I said, just a few minutes away from the opening keynote at 10 o'clock Central European time. We will hand it over to Wendy Mars, president of Cisco EMEA. Really exciting here. So what are we going to do right now? We're going to continue this conversation of all in, and we want all of you to be all in as well. So like I said, we're going to go back to the keynote space in just a moment where the crowds are flooding in. We are going to bring you every single moan of it. Again, so glad to have you with us. So what are we going to do right now? Sustainability is so important. And right now we're going to go to an interesting video of what's going on with sustainability here at Cisco, specifically in smart buildings. Check that out. We will see you right on the other side. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partner's technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely, delivering power over Ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco wireless and DNA spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. So as you can see, Cisco Smart Building Solutions are creating intuitive, trusted facilities that are helping to enhance health and safety and efficiencies and everything that really forms that foundation of the future of work. And it's all built on the network. The network is so fundamental to the smart building as that fourth utility, really. Uh, here in Amsterdam, everybody who visits the Cisco Showcase, they are checking out the Catalyst 9000 family, along with capabilities like software-defined access and Cisco Spaces and Meraki MD and Cisco devices. So much cool stuff. Smart room. Uh, touchless voice assistance. These are all driving real results for a more resilient, secure network. So, Cedric, what we're going to do before you and I chat a little bit, we're going to head back out onto the keynote space. Uh, I can say, oh, look at this. Nish has already got somebody with her. Nish, who do you have with you there? Hey, thanks, Steve. So I'm here with Neville Letzrich. He's our VP of Security yeah. Marketing. So, Neville, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? 
I'm doing great. The energy in here is building. Everyone's really excited about the keynote. Now, obviously, you lead our security marketing team, and you know, security is really top of mind for our customers. Tell me, obviously, this is your first Cisco Live in EMEA, but I know you're excited about security. What's going on here for security at the show? You know, it's great to see security front and center at the show, right when you walk in in the cafe, all of our big demo booths are there. As you go through the World of Solutions Expo, you can see even more security. So it's really all over the show. It's so great to see everybody's excitement about it as well. And obviously we've been around, we've been walking around the world of solutions. We're going to continue to walk around and we'll get to you know, get some of the coverage and demos for security. So obviously we've seen zero trust. What else is here at the show? You got to come and look at some of the stuff we're doing around some of the sassy stuff, all the different things in firewall, a lot of the great stuff in umbrella. So there's so many things across the entire security portfolio worth coming to look at. So definitely make the time to stop by. Right, and we have, as well as the World of Solutions, we have innovation talks. There are lots of sessions. I know security, I'm sure, will be covered in the keynote as well. Um, so tell me a little bit more around what you're most excited for. Is that going to be a session you want to attend? Or, you know, if you're going to take one thing away for the audience that are watching this broadcast from home, what should they tune into this week? You know, it's, it's hard to pick one thing because there's so many great things. For me personally, it's really getting to spend time with customers, hearing from the customers directly and the partners. So I don't think there's one particular thing. It's really just getting to go across the different security pieces at the show. So my plug, come see the various different security elements. And then, of course, the keynote. We're all really excited to see Tom up there talking about the great things that are going on. Amazing. Well, Neville, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll head back to the studio. Bravo, Nish. Thank you, and thanks for getting Neville. Please say hello to him for me. It's really exciting to see him out here. Uh, we really appreciate that. All right, Cedric, I want to bring you in on the conversation here. We have had an actually uh, a really good opportunity the past day, day and a half in prep for this to walk around yep. in the world of solutions. You know me, I always come back to the personal. How are people interacting with our technologies, right? We can talk technology all day long. I like the human side of the Cisco story. Yep, so know. what have you been noticing on that human side? Human side, wow. um, I have been walking around, wandering around, and I first thing I did is, was just go straight into the world of solutions, straight go to the Cisco showcase, to just like being able to see actually all of our products yeah. there in like real life, I'm just sitting behind my desk normally at home and now being able to touch certain of our catalyst devices and so on, it's just awesome to like do that and like learn a little bit more. Um, I've made my way then uh, like to the hub. Um, I had a strobe waffle yesterday. You can get them for free. Like if you go to the CCIE lounge uh, yesterday, they're freshly made, they were, they were delicious. As to Steve, I think we should go there after, after like during our lunch break. You and I are going to get a strobe waffle there? Absolutely. Again, this is what it's like to be here in the middle of the show event, right? It's not just about the capabilities. We love to have those great conversations, really dive deep into the full uh, one Cisco portfolio. But then we get to do all the fun play stuff as well. We're yep. going to talk about the bikes a little bit later. We're going to talk about the coffee stations that are set up. But you and I have a strobe waffle date, is what you're saying. We are having a strobe waffle date, and then this afternoon I'm gonna go into the Cisco store here just behind us and like explore a little bit of our merchandising and technologies in there. Maybe I might um, try to dance a little bit because we have a DJ over here as well behind us. Um, so I mean, I think there is so much to come for uh, here at Cisco Live, Steve. Well, we I don't know, know if you want to see me dancing. I'm telling you, do I want to see you dancing? Again, you're the newest member of our broadcast yeah. host team. If I don't see you dancing, I'm going to be deeply disappointed. Okay. Cedric, we're going to go back out into the keynote space, and oh, you've got Zoe Rose there with you, Rob Boyd. Oh, I do as well, Steve. Very good. You've kept up with our veterans. So Zoe Rose is indeed with me. And Zoe, I was just curious. It's great to catch up with you. We first met, I think it was, you said 2015. You were wearing, was it the social media award of some sort, those capes? Yeah. So tell me how you're doing. I'm doing really well, actually. It's been a bit of a, a, bit of a time since we've seen each other last. I've grown up a little bit. Um, still have that cape though, so I can pull it off if you need it. <laughs> I'm just so happy to find out you're allowed to keep the cape. I thought maybe you had to pass it on. But what are you doing these days? Yeah, I think you said you were in security. You work uh, for a customer. I don't know if we want to say the customer name or not, but you work for Canon. Sounds like you're okay with it. So you're doing security for Canon, big company, multinational. A lot of things come up. What, uh, what informs what Canon's doing in your job as to what you might be looking for to learn this week or ask questions about? Yeah, I mean, I'm always interested to learn from other people's perspectives. So what I really like at conferences is we have all of the dis different types of people, different industries, and they're talking about their different use cases. And the benefit there is I can see, oh, actually, that makes sense in my environment, or that doesn't make absolute any sense to me, so maybe I won't do that. And it helps me kind of tailor the path I'm going to go forward with. Are there any specific technology changes 
because security is a constantly evolving environment, a little bit reactive, but are there any specific areas that you think are very getting very interesting and that you're looking to explore more or maybe just get better at, perhaps professionally? I think security always wants to be quick. You know, we, we have to change, but also automation is kind of required in that because look at the breaches. I mean, how many years ago we would say, oh, 200 days, somebody's in our environment. And that's a decent amount to recognize. And then now it's like, oh, 30 minutes? You know, we need to know right away. And what was that latest breach? It was like four minutes they were able to start, stop the phishing. So adding any automation into that is quite critical and so that's kind of the area I want to look at and to be good at automation you've got to bloody understand what's going on to be able to automate it so it's really just understand the granular bits and pieces yeah takes a whole lot of trust Zoe thank you so much it's always been a pleasure being your friend throughout the years and I hope that continues hope you have a good rest of Cisco live with that we'll go back to the studio guys Bravo, nicely done. Thanks so much to Zoe. Uh, really appreciate her, her her expert opinion there. Again, she's been around long enough. She knows the security side of what's going on. So, Cedric, um, yes. we got capes coming out already right here at the beginning of the day, right? Yes, I saw someone that was dedicated with uh, all-in cape, just like just walking around. Oh, and I was like, oh, yeah. this is so cool. Where can, maybe they have it in the Cisco store. Like, I'm going to check it out. I today. don't think you can just go buy your own cape. I think you have to earn that cape, Cedric. How do I do that, Steve? Oh, well, we're going to talk about that as we continue to go. <clears throat> Let me talk hybrid for just a moment. Um, we've got our team still out there. Again, they're piling through the huge amount of people. Let me pull back to hybrid yep. again, because it is such a huge part of our conversation here in Amsterdam, yeah. right? And I am very much a work from home, work from anywhere type of road mm -hmm. warrior. I'm out all the time with what I do, and I know that you're sort of the same way. So yep. if we think about the way that we operate, this work from anywhere concept, it's really all about freedom, right? It's freedom yeah, of absolutely. choice. So absolutely. we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut real quick because I see that Nish has got some guests out here in the keynote space. So Nish, let's head on over to you. Thank you, Steve. I'm back here and I'm with two very special people who've been a great part of bringing this event together with their team. So I'm here with Emma Roffey, who's our VP of Marketing in EMEA, and Carrie Palin, who's our SVP and Chief Marketing Officer. So Carrie, I'm coming to you. Tell me how you're feeling right now because the energy in here is amazing. Look at the people behind you, they're still piling in. How are you doing? Yes, so I'm thrilled to be here. It is my first Cisco Live EMEA. It's our first one in three years, and the energy is so palpable. It was on the floor yesterday. So many people, I think over 10,000 were joining us as of yesterday, which is a phenomenal number. 45% of those folks are actually new to Cisco Live. So we are so thrilled to educate, connect, and inspire today. I love that, and you said 45% of the attendees are new here, right? We also have on the other side our net vets who have been here several times. We're excited to welcome them back. Emma, we've also got another group of very special people here, our Cisco Insiders. So tell me about that program. Yeah, really, uh, we're bringing back Cisco Insider Executives. So this is a brand new community, peer-to-peer -peer conversations facilitated by Cisco. So come and be part of that executive community and executive membership. You can go to Cisco Insiders, and you've got Cisco Insiders advocates, champions, users, user research. So we heard you. We, you asked us to make it more simple for us, and we have. We simplified all the programs, so just sign up and be a member. And I look forward to seeing all the executives at the Exec Symposium tomorrow. Amazing, and obviously we're about to head into the keynote. There is so much going on right through from innovation talks, lots of breakout sessions, meet the experts, and of course the world of solutions where we've got some really fun things going on. What are you most excited about seeing, doing this week? Oh, I can't wait to hear the keynotes this morning. Lots of news coming out of our solutions groups and our GMs, so stay tuned. Yeah, just meeting everyone. I've seen a lot of people who have been here for many years, so I've loved seeing all the advocates. Um, all of our partners who are here as well, so lots of friends and of course the Cisco colleagues. So the whole connection, that's what I'm looking forward to. Got it, and we have you know, 10 to 12,000 people here live in person. It's a sold out event. We've got so many joining us from home, right? So what is the one thing that you would really like them to take away from this year's Cisco Live? I think some of you may be watching it virtually and I'd just like take away, come live next year because you're really really in for a treat like this year but also you watch it virtually but yeah turn up in person again next year we'll be back here next year as well massive growth mindset here at cisco so much is changing and evolving for the benefit of our customers technologically and as a community so i can't wait for everyone to continue to grow with us thank you so much emma and carrie we're going to head back to the studio now 
Oh my gosh, Nish, fantastic. You could not have grabbed two better people out there on the keynote show floor. Uh, they are exactly the ones who know what is going on tip to tail and like you just heard from Anna. Be here, be in the room. It makes all the difference in the world. We are a little less than 10 minutes away. In fact, uh, by my clock, just about nine minutes away from our opening keynote. Ah, yes, we are right on time. I always love to hear that from backstage. Cedric, we would just start to talk about the work from anywhere, the yep. hybrid environment. Yep. What are your thoughts on that? Because you do this all the time. This is you. I think that's, that's something that we have been doing at Cisco for such a long time already, Steve. We have the freedom to work from almost anywhere. I work at home one day, I roll out of bed, I'm at my desk, right? Then I decide like to go into an office one day, to go in another office another day, and so on, because I want to meet my colleagues as well, mm -hmm. not just on screen, but also in real life. So again, another like uh, way to come up here at um, Cisco Life. But it's so important for me to have that human connection with people uh, and still being able to have that freedom. So we at Cisco, like we have such great tools to do that, right? We have our WebEx uh, collaboration portfolio, WebEx Desk Pro. I wish I had one of those at home actually, Steve. Like maybe this is a shout out to the WebEx team, send one please. Um, but essentially, yeah, so I just really, really, really love our collaboration products. And um, it just gives me the freedom to go anywhere, as I said, to the offices, but also if I want to go and see my parents back in Belgium where I, where I grew up, I can just like go there and work from there and like spend some time with them as well. So hi, mom and dad, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I just thought like I'd throw it in here. Uh, but yeah, so that's so important for me, Steve, like that freedom, and I think Cisco really supports that. Couldn't agree with you more, that's exactly right. I can see that Rob Boyd is with Antonio Doda back out there on the <laughs> keynote space. Rob, is that right? Yes, uh, I'm very much enjoying the music, Steve. I apologize if I seemed a little bit out of control. It just, it keeps getting louder. I can feel it, I like it. I've got a new friend here, actually should be an old friend because he's been near me for many years. Tell us who you are, what you do, and how long have you been coming? For lots of years. I'm Antonio coming from Italy. And how many Cisco Lives have you been to? This is my eighth Cisco Live. <laughs> Has it eight actual Cisco Lives or eight years of Cisco Lives? Eight Cisco Lives. Because you were to the U.S. as well. You mentioned you were in Vegas with us a while back. So tell me, you're in the financial industry. You specialize in collaboration. They were just talking about that in the studio. What kind of things are you looking for this week, whether it be collaboration or not, in terms of informing what you and your team need to move forward successfully? We are looking to improve all, all our environment. We can leverage on technology, meet the sustain sustainability goal that we everyone should take care. So we are really focused on that. And it's great to be here because I can learn more and more basically every day. Well, one thing about not mentioning your specific employer, I'm just curious, have you guys fully bought into hybrid work? Do you feel like you guys are supporting your teams to work from wherever they need? And is that is that working for you? Yes, and we are trying to do more and more and better every time. Because the hybrid work, it's, uh, it's a great key for people. It's not just work, also for the well-being of people. No, it's like once we get a taste of it, it's hard to say. Antonio, thank you so much. Appreciate your time, guys. We'll go back to you in the studio. Rob, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Another great chat. Keep going to find people. We are about uh, six minutes away from kicking off the keynote. We are incredibly yep. excited for this at 10 o'clock Central European time. So that's going to be coming to you uh, live very, very shortly. Cedric, let's talk social media really quickly, yep. shall we? Yep, how do we do that, Steve, right? We, we have it? the hashtag, hashtag Cisco Life EMEA. So you at home, if you're tuning in from the broadcast, let us know what you're thinking about the keynote afterwards. I will be scrolling through your tweets. I love Twitter and I have it open right now. I can see that our social media team had lots of coffees because they just had a tweet that it's the most caffeinated social media team that there is, <laughs> right? I also saw a tweet from uh, Jeff uh, Sheritz, or Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Um, it's actually Carrie's boss. Yeah. Um, and he tweeted uh, yesterday that he's, uh, that he's very excited. It's crunch time for Cisco Live EMEA uh, here in Amsterdam. Jonathan Davidson is uh, showing us a behind the scenes keynote prep uh, picture as well. So they're getting ready uh, just to kind of smash it out there, uh, the keynote, just a few minutes to come from, here, from now. Um, so yeah, what else do we have on here? Um, oh, I can see myself actually right now on Twitter. This is kind of cool. Hey, <laughs> look at you, you're famous. Yeah, oh wow. Like, I'll give you my autograph after this, Steve. <laughs> like, just FYI, right? Absolutely, please do. Sorry about that. <clears throat> As Rob said, total the frog, frog in the throat here. So you go ahead and keep going. Any other interesting tweets here? Um, I can see, yeah, see, the stroke waffle thing is on here as well, what I told you about, so we really have to go there. I'm just going to stroll a little bit. I can see some tweets from partners. Uh, Chinton Patel is in the building as well. Um, he says, let's go. 
Radio, Cisco Life, EMEA. Yeah. With, like, this and I'm going to talk to you, Chinton, in just a moment. You know what? Let's go back out to the show floor. It looks like Nish has got some more friends out there. Nish, what do you I think? I do. I've made friends who are friends with each other, and I've got a really exciting story. Both CCIEs for 20 years. So firstly, congratulations. That's an achievement. But let's start with some introductions. What's your name? What are you doing here at Cisco Live? Uh, my name is Sibur and Um I really like CCI. So the, the being CCI, and of course, with all the other TMs, we are we get a front row seat, right? Yeah. So that's really, really awesome. The VIP treatment, no less. <laughs> and how about you, Mark? Uh, Mark Siebring, I'm a consultant for a lot of companies, and I love being here because it's the place to be if you want to meet cool people. All right, and I know you've got an interesting story on how you two met, and I know you could reconnect at Cisco Live every year. How did you meet? Well, we actually met at the front row seat in Barcelona a few years ago, both as champions, so that was really, really cool. With the flying guy on the, on the stage. Oh, that was a cool year, the flying guy on the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was really, yeah, cool. Yeah. So um, you keep coming back and, you know, maintaining your CCIE. Tell us a little bit around what you do here at Cisco Live. What are some of your day-to-day -day activities? How do you experience and take it all in? Well, of course, you've got the, the breakout sessions, which we kind of must stay because we need to, get to, 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 we need to make sure that our knowledge gets up to speed and, and at, at the right level. So it's a con continuous education we do, yeah. Got it. Yeah, and you, you want to be here because this is where all the knowledge comes together and you have the serendipity of meeting people that actually give you information that you will not get in other places. So that's the reason to come back, because you keep, people, keep meeting people like Sibirin. Amazing, I love that. And obviously this is not your first Cisco Live. You met here, you reconnect here. What are you most excited about this year? What, you know, is there anything different that you're really kind of looking forward to? Of course, it's Amsterdam. It's local to us. We're both living in the Netherlands, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. But the one of the key things I really like is to meet people. To meet people and have the direct connections with, well, I think, anyone we, we, we can join and have a good conversation with. That, that's, that's very awesome. And we have, obviously, the technology tracks here. We have the IT leadership program. We have lots of leadership tracks and people and culture as well. So is there a technology area you're excited about or any innovations you're kind of hoping to keep, you know, close to your agenda this week? Uh, what, what I really like is um, I'm, I'm a collaboration guy, so I love everything collaboration, uh, including WebEx. And now at Amsterdam, this, I think it's the first time we have the, the full WebEx hologram in place with, with the camera array, so that's really awesome to see. And that's what's cool about Cisco Live, right, is you can read it, you can hear about it, but see it in action. And, and touch it, ex experience it. Absolutely. All right, well, we're going to head back to the studio now. Thank you so much for joining me. Back to you, Steve. Nish, well done, bravo. 20 plus years CCIEs, that is just fantastic. Last thing I want to mention before we throw to the keynote in about a minute and a half, customer experience. It is all about innovating and transforming at the speed of change. Really embracing your possible. What I really love so much about CX is that it is leading the way here in our industry. It's helping customers to really take away all of those barriers to innovate and to realize genuine business value and to do it faster every single step in their life cycle using the right expertise and the right insights. So, we are just about to go to the keynote. We are about a minute, minute and a half, maybe two minutes away. We'll see how it goes. But we're going to go out to our president of EMEA, Wendy Mars. She has got Liz Santoni and uh, Javed Khan and Tom Gillis and Adele Trombetta. It's going to be a fantastic talk. But what are we going to hear from? It's going to be all about this all-in concept, right, Cedric? Everything is all-in. You're all-in. I'm all-in. The whole team is. They are as well. But what all-in really means is... What are the different ways that we can create real, meaningful impact within yep, our communities, right? How do we drive real change for your business, for your organization? You're going to hear all the latest and greatest innovations, everything helping you to grow now and to grow out well into the future as well. Remember, keep reaching out to us at what? What is the hashtag? Hashtag Cisco Life EMEA. Right. And what if they want to come in on the website? Where do they go there? Yeah, so you can just go in and onto like CiscoLive.com. We have uh, live caption translation in eight languages. I want to see those emojis that Nish talked about, like flowing up as well. Um, so there's just loads of ways to engage with us, but we definitely want to hear from you at home. We want you to be 
in with this, all in on this with us here at Cisco Life Amsterdam. Absolutely, and we are here with you 24 hours a day on the entire stream, all the way up to the closing keynote of the conference. Do not go away. If you miss anything, it's all going to be available to you on the CiscoLive.com website. Right now we are headed into the keynote space. Enjoy, we'll see you right back here as soon as we're done. Away we go. And welcome to the stage, the president of Cisco EMEA, Wendy Mars. A huge welcome to all of you to Cisco Live EMEA. You know, the last time we were all together was three years ago in Barcelona. Isn't it great to be back together again? And of course, a big hello to everyone who's joining us online today. But let me start off by saying thank you. Firstly, for all of you being with me today. But also, I'd like to say that we have an amazing week planned for you. You're gonna have a fantastic time. But most importantly, I would like to thank you for the trust that you instilled in Cisco, helping you to navigate these past few years and to help us to accelerate digital transformation across our region. Now, the pace of that transformation has been truly remarkable. When you look back, it's incredible to reflect on what we achieved together over such a short period of time. And since we were last together at Cisco Live in 2020, we have turbocharged digitization across many industries. From transportation, to healthcare, from education to energy, to sports and entertainment. We've demonstrated what can be done digitally is being done digitally. And we've all experienced just how much digital adoption accelerated during the pandemic. Having switched entirely to remote working initially, we're now working on how do we hop optimize for hybrid work in many different types of environments. The number of connected devices continues to grow. I can't see that slowing down. 5G adoption is well underway, and we're starting to explore the potential for 6G. And we're evolving from digitizing manual processes to really focusing on experience, using technology to drive ex exceptional experiences in many different types of settings. And we're automating processes, which of course frees up time and increases productivity for all of us. And I say we, because it's all of you together in this room, which is driving that change. And you know what? We're just getting started. But we all know that this year ahead presents many challenges that we're gonna to need to tackle. We have a war in our region. Security risks are increasing exponentially, and that's partly due to the geopolitical turmoil. The economy is challenged, and in many of our countries, and we have inflation at 40-year highs. We also have an energy crisis, a crisis that we're trying to manage as citizens and within our businesses, whilst we're feeling increased pressure on sustainability and a need for all of us to play our role there. And a supply chain, of course, continues to be challenged. And we have to make sure that we remain focused on the skills agenda, because we face a growing digital skills gap in our societies. But despite the scale of these challenges, we have a lot of opportunity and untapped potential. But none of us can do it alone. When we come together, all of you, our customers, our partners, our ecosystem, system, and governments, we can achieve incredible things. Together, we are building an inclusive and sustainable future for all. And I know that we are all in on that. You know, at Cisco, we have made some strong commitments to net zero. And I know that we're working with many of you on your sustainability projects too. 
As an example of this, you will hear from NL today on what they're doing within the, within the energy sector. And this Cisco Live event has a huge focus on sustainability, and we're working to make it one of our most sustainable events yet. And in the fight against cybercrime, we're sharing threat intelligence to appropriate parties to make sure that we help to protect our customers, our citizens, and our countries. And that's including where stakes are at their highest. And across the region, we're working on country digitization projects where governments and businesses are coming together to level up in so many ways. And we've been involved recently in major events with COP27, the Football World Cup, and more to come. But also, we've been working on, uh, with the Olympics project as well in Paris 2024. Sports and entertainment is a real area of opportunity for digitization across the region of EMEA, as you'll hear in the examples from City Football uh, Group later today. And finally, the talent and the skills needed for digital transformation are top of mind for us all. We need to make sure that no one is left behind. I'm incredibly proud of our Network Academy program, which has been running for 25 years, helping millions to gain the skills that they need in the area of IT. And you know, it's not just networking, it's IoT, it's cybersecurity, and many other areas as well. And we'll continue our investment in this for decades to come to upskill millions more. And I couldn't talk skills without talking about Cisco certification. I know personally the value of the CCIE. When I achieved this 25, yes, 25 years ago, not only was, was I relieved, but I was also incredibly proud. And I know that this had served a great foundation for my career, and I know it has for many of you too. So this really is a world of opportunity open to us all. Skills is so important. Now I'm also incredibly proud of our people our people and the work that they do with all of you. And I know in so many cases, our teams are an extension of your teams. And that's the way that it should be, because we're all in it together. And that is a privilege that we don't take lightly. We're working to do our best to be the most strategic partner that we can possibly be. Transformation is not easy, and it's so important for us all to make sure that we transform to stay relevant. And we're all doing that within our respective businesses. By sharing what we learn, by listening to each other, we can help each other with our own respective transformations, no matter whatever stage you're at within your business. You know, we've organized our engineering teams around the areas that are important for you, and we listen from an innovation perspective. And we're so excited to share today and throughout this week news around technology innovation. And we'll be talking to you about that in emerging technologies, networking, security, and collaboration portfolio overall. And we'll be sharing many examples of successful projects where we're bringing these initiatives to life. And we're doing this together because it's all about delivering value, which makes a difference that counts. And that's the power of a team. And as a team, we're all in. And now, I'd like to welcome my friend and colleague, Liz Santoni, to the stage. Liz, come on up. Thank you, Wendy. Three years. I can't believe it's three years already. And I think in some ways when I look about what I'm about to share with you, it feels like we've piled up a whole bunch of new things to share that with you. So I'm really excited to be here today. I get to talk to you about two things. One is around innovations that we have in market today and what's coming up in the future. Then we have a whole bunch of new things going on in full stack observability. But I get to pick three things. So I would encourage you to go out there, go to the breakout sessions, check out the demos in the world of solutions. I've got three things. I'm going to talk about the tech preview that we're doing on our full stack observability platform. I'm going to touch on application security and customer digital experience monitoring as well because I'd like to show you how we're bringing our portfolio together, observability, networking, security, to enable these use cases. So if you look at this slide, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we have in our jobs, 
when we talk about emerging technologies and incubation, is to look at what's real and what's hype. Like, so that we're not just chasing the new shiny object that's out there. Sometimes I look at that slide and I go, there could be a few things that's out in the future that could be the next you know, kind of shiny object, but we won't know till we check it out, experiment with it, and see if there are real use cases around there. Predictive was actually you know, not that long ago. It was a question on, you know, would predictive really make it? But today, when you think about Thousand Eyes WAN insights, you can analyze diverse data sets, forecast potential performance issues, and recommend optimal paths in your SD-WAN environment. And by the way, in a few months, we should be able to give you that option to automate that action as well. So fabulous product. In security, and Tom's going to talk about this more, the team has been using predictive to do dynamic baselining. We do the same thing in full stack observability as well. And Java has a whole list of items where he's going to talk about how we use NLP and large language models to be able to do features like closed captioning and meeting transcripts as well. And one of my favorite features, Javed, noise removal. Because there's always a bunch of, you know, kind of noise in the background. So a lot of things, you know, when you think about what we're doing with predictive. But when I think about, you know, all of us, chat GPT, you know, number one, um, I've spent, I would say, a few hours, you know, just futzing around with it. But at the company, we're looking at generative AI. How can generative AI enhance the use cases, our products and solutions today? And how could it build on more from infrastructure all the way to applications? We're looking at areas such as starter code for infrastructure as code automation. We're looking at what can we do in troubleshooting? What can we do as far as data interpretation is concerned? Tom's looking at in the area of security vulnerabilities management. But as we talk about AI, it's our responsibility to also look at ethical and responsible AI. Cisco's responsible AI framework includes things like ethics, risk, security, privacy, responsibility. And when we talk about generative AI, these issues are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you add in new issues. You add in issues around copyright and plagiarism and deep fakes. It's going to take all of us coming together to make responsible AI happen. OK, there's a lot of things to cover in full stack observability, and I'm super excited. We, we brought all of these together to showcase that to you today. So I was thinking, you know, what would it take? You know, maybe it's Adele who can come in and sing to us, but she was not available to, for a duet. So I asked ChatGPT, how would Adele intro full stack observability? And I have to tell you, when I look at that first paragraph, and it talks about, you know, hear the logs crying out and the metrics scream and shout. That was pretty darn creative. And I looked at that and I thought, it makes me want to kind of break out in song. And then I realized, we want you to stay here for the rest of the keynote, so I'll save you all from that. So moving on in, in real life, you know, when we talk about full stack observability, observability is for everyone across all industries, across B2B and B2C as well. We pulled, pulled a few customer examples from Vodafone all the way to Pirelli in around how these customers are using full stack observability. If you look at Vodafone, Vodafone talks about optimizing complex customer facing applications to deliver the best experience. First, Abu Dhabi Bank, it's all about reducing downtime and improving the mean time to repair. For all of these customers, they have a mix of applications in their environment. Everything from traditional to hybrid to cloud native. They're faced with complexity, tool sprawl, and friction between teams, but everyone's pointing the finger at the other person. And they all have common outcomes, just like you do. And those outcomes are really around performance, dollars, cost. It's around looking at mitigating risk. It's also around how do I actually minimize the friction between the teams and focus them on what matters more. And so I'm really thankful to EasyJet for allowing us to share this story around how they've leveraged Cisco full stack observability. And in EasyJet's own words, it's really about the customer experience, making sure all of their systems were working both in the front end and behind the scenes as well. 
from easyjet.com to everything as an airline operation that they need to do from scheduling crews, from aircraft being scheduled, and much more. And their journey to observability started at the application, went down all the way to the databases, down to the, to the network, down to the internet, and the user experience as well. So I'm really proud of what we at Cisco have enabled EasyJet in terms of their goal of being a data-driven airline as well. So how do we do this? We're taking a platform approach to it. And we started with this architectural approach, starting with building the platform out, built for scale and performance, providing data-driven insights to drive services tied to business context, so you're prioritizing actions that actually matter most to the business. It could be revenue, it could be cost, it could be lowering the risk, and enabling outcomes, delivering real business cases, and real use cases around application monitoring, application security, optimizing cost, optimizing the underlying infrastructure. And I want to unpack this a little bit more and get into a little bit more detail. So this week, we're doing the tech preview of our full stack observability platform. We built this platform as open, API-driven, anchored on open telemetry, and fully extensible. The platform has flexible data ingestion from multiple IT domains and processing for multiple use cases as well. We ingest metrics, events, logs, and traces, or MELT, and streaming data from cloud-native applications and third parties as well. The platform has cross-melt visibility and troubleshooting. By the way, you can leverage the use cases, the seven use cases that I, can, I showed. You can build your own use cases on top of that and extend out your full stack observability solution. And it also augments your business process observability as well. By the way, our intent is to be able to offer you a choice of UI if you want a consolidated view. But this, you can actually also consume this as part of your platform or set of tools via the APIs and SDKs that we've built. And I want to hit on a couple more things because I think it's truly important when we talk about what's standard in the industry. We believe OTEL, or Open Telemetry, will see more adoption in 2023, driven by this need for a standard way of instrumenting, of collecting, and exporting telemetry data. Now, in Open Telemetry, while applications have taken the lead, networking and security is not that far behind. And as of December of 2022, there were about 400 contributors to open telemetry. And I'm really proud to say that Cisco has been number one in contributions in open telemetry. In enabling business process observability, as I mentioned, we build this platform to, to again, bring together MELT data from multiple different domains and provide those contextualized insights tied to business context. But we do this on an application by application basis. And when you look at business process flows, you're bringing together multiple applications, all their dependencies, even some common dependencies like the internet for that matter. The reason for us to be able to develop this platform open and API first so that you as partners or customers can ingest the visibility insights and actions from what we're building into your business processes and flows. And you can quickly identify what part of the business is impacted. You can prioritize based on the business context in terms of what matters most and return the systems to a healthy state. OK, from platforms, I want to actually go to use cases. So as I showed, we enable seven use cases. And AppD does everything from, AppDynamics does everything from supporting on-prem to hybrid to cloud-native applications. We have a lot more coming on the roadmap as it relates to resource and cost optimization as well. But I want to double-click on application security and customer digital experience monitoring as well. With application security, our goal is to be able to protect the application everywhere from development to runtime as well. With AppDynamics, by the way, today we do, do support applications in runtime. But what I'm excited to say is that this is the first time, as of a couple of days ago, actually, that we've released a first-to-market business risk observability. We've integrated AppDynamics business transactions with API security, threat intel from Talos, and with Kenna vulnerability scoring as well. So what you're going to see pretty soon on the, on the screen is screenshots from the real product. By the way, if you don't know Kenna, you should go check it out. It's this really cool asset. 
you know, one of the examples is it will give you a likelihood of exploit even when the CVSS score is low. This is a level of insight and guidance that's I don't think you see anywhere else in the, in the industry. So using Kenna vulnerability scoring plus AppDynamics business transaction, your application can now get a business risk scoring, which means you get visibility into the likelihood of exploit for your applications or the services as well. And so your applications and your security teams have now expanded out the threat visibility and using the business context from AppDynamics can now prioritize actions. It's a, a risk related to impacting revenue. It could be cost, it could be user experience. So just two examples, along with API security, where we're ingesting you know, kind of a visibility around the risk related to third-party uh, API usage. So just two examples on how we're bringing observability and security together, speeding up mean time to resolution, and lowering the risk profile of your organization. Going on to the next use case. So we've been hearing from you, especially as hybrid work uh, seems to heat up even more, that you want to be able to triage issues in real time, whether it's at the user end, mobile or app, the application, internet, or third-party SaaS services. And this is why we're doing a deeper integration with AppDynamics and Thousand Eyes, sharing bi-directional data, telemetry data. So AppDynamics can ingest in real time network metrics and intelligence from Thousand Eyes and can quickly identify where there are potential or actual existing network and internet problems that's impacting the performance of the application. And by the way, AppDynamics shares back with Thousand Eyes very detailed application dependency mapping as well. And here's a preview of what you will see coming up in just a couple of months. What we're doing is we're closing the internet visibility gap as the application's journeys to the cloud and or SaaS for that matter, and being able to deliver this with the customer digital experience monitoring solution, especially as the adoption of hybrid work goes out, you can enable a much richer experience for the user. So think about it with the solutions, simpler, faster triage, and in context of the application, breaking down the silos between the application and the network teams, because Jonathan, as always, it's always the network that's at issue um, most of the time, and speeding up the mean time to innocence. So you can say, it's not the network, you know, add your you know, favorite comment after that. So I know I went through like boom, 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 a whole bunch of things because we're super excited that we're here after three years and get the ability to actually showcase to you with demos and breakout sessions all the things that we're doing, whether from innovations across our portfolio to what we're doing in full stack observability as well. So please do go check out the talks both today and tomorrow. Go to the world of solutions, check out those demos. The teams have been working on that. Go to our DevNet zone as well. And with that, I'd love to invite up the ever intriguing Jonathan Davidson. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Liz. I don't know that I've ever been called intriguing before, but I appreciate that. that. And also, Wendy, I've known Wendy for a long time. I didn't know you were a CCIE. That's awesome. Uh, also, from my fellow CCIE person, I am also extremely excited to be back in person with all of you here today. It has been a long three years. I lead the Cisco networking team that is transforming infrastructure around the globe. Cisco Networking builds the products and technologies that power the most sophisticated networks across the planet. This includes hyperscalers and service providers, public sector companies, enterprises, small and medium businesses, all that critical infrastructure depends upon Cisco for providing those unified experiences. And for end users, those unified experiences simplify technologies, it simplifies applications, networks, and solutions to go and act as one. You know, when architected in silos, inconsistency across these domains leaves networks vulnerable and increases and frustrates security risks. 
Like, it's as if you're reading a book, and what you really want is to curl up in a blanket, but instead of getting that blanket, someone hands you a thousand pieces of cloth that you get to stitch together in any way you wish. And sometimes that's what it feels like to be in IT. You're given those pieces, but in reality, you really just want to curl up with a big, cozy blanket. Now, the future of technology innovation that weaves together enterprises and cloud with the infrastructure between so that you can deliver a big, cozy blanket of unified experiences to all of your customers. Cisco's strategy for unified experiences begins with one simple vision, to simplify IT for everyone, everywhere and anywhere, and at every scale around. Simplification begins with platforms. Think about Nexus, DNA Center, Intersight, Thousand Eyes, and of course, Meraki. The platform approach is easy to start using, it's easy to scale and extend, and it's easy to innovate using the open API framework that Liz was talking about. Furthermore, enhancing that platform strategy with the power of a cloud operating model, even greater outcomes are possible. Now you can see this with the cloud-driven automation for Catalyst using the Meraki dashboard. We launched this last June at Cisco Live in the US. Our Catalyst portfolio powers the most sophisticated enterprise networks around the world and will continue to do so for many, many, many years to come. However, for many, the operations must scale more efficiently and with more agility. Now you can monitor and manage Catalyst products using the simplicity of the Meraki dashboard without incurring any additional cost because your DNA licenses include that capability as well. Now, expanding on what Liz talked about, Thousand Eyes makes networks experiences more predictable. It already enables the absolute best visibility of what's happening across the internet today, visibility into the digital experiences over the internet from any app to any cloud and user anywhere. And now Thousand Eyes WAN Insights scales assurance across all of your global networks. We are analyzing massive amounts of data and we use AI predictive models to make sure that you're able to provide insights that improve performance avoid issues, and create better experiences for your users. On top of that, Cisco Plus Secure Connect allows security and networking to come together and let those teams collaborate with unmatched visibility, insight, and action. As an example, deploying SASE, we are now reducing that from weeks down to hours by unifying networking and security together through a single dashboard. We can accelerate the SASE journey with all of our SD-WAN solutions and simplify hybrid work, whether your solution is Meraki SD-WAN or whether you're using the Viptela vManage SD-WAN solution. These platforms simplify some of the most advanced networks across the entire world. So please take the experience Take the opportunity to experience them in the world of solutions. Now, as we look ahead, the future of connectivity has never been more exciting. Ten years ago, the world was just waking up to smartphones and nobody really knew what it meant for all of us. Think about ten years from now. It may be difficult to remember what life was like today. Nine out of ten enterprise decision makers believe that wireless networking and IoT are important to their future as businesses. These technologies will absolutely redefine industries like sensors and drones and machinery when you connect them to change the world as profoundly as the cloud has done over the last 10 years. I'll give you an example. Ford Motor Company worked closely with Cisco to become a first mover in transforming transportation. The automotive industry is over 100 years old. Colossal changes are happening in that space. You have electrification, you have auto manufacturing, you have autonomous driving, and you have what we all love, these in-car experiences. Today, cars do so much more 
that move us from point A to point B. Cars are rolling movie theaters. They're remote offices. And yes, I will admit they're even private karaoke studios. So Liz, maybe you could join me for a duet later. That would be great. All right. So with more than 90 million connected vehicles, Cisco's IoT Control Center is the number one communications management platform in the world. And Ford has trusted Cisco to help operations collaborate with IT to revolutionize the transportation energy. Let's take a look and roll the video. Ford is on a mission to help transform the automotive industry. We're pushing into electric architectures, building software expertise, and driving the fully connected car experience forward. We're changing the customer relationship, so it's no longer just transactional, it's every day. Cisco is building a digital nervous system for the new age of information. Using the network to connect, secure, and move data from sensors and the Internet of Things through edge intelligence, up to the cloud, and down to the people. This digital transformation allows organizations, communities, and people to instantly harness the power of data to unleash new possibilities. This transformation is so critical. That's why the city of Detroit is here to put it in human terms. For every accident, there's many more near misses. And for every near miss, there's even more safety hazards down the path. Having access to and sharing real-time data will let our citizens know when and where these hazards and risks exist today. And it will let us predict and possibly prevent them in the future. This could not only change the way that cities and roads are run, it could positively impact the environment, congestion, and ultimately, it will help save lives. From a digital transformation, this is the beginning. We're giving voice to the machines on factory floors and vision to vehicles on the go. It gives new purpose to how cars are used and connects people when it matters most. Imagine a world where vehicles get data from a network of sensors that are embedded in the roadways or the intersections, even buried within the concrete. Well, most of the technology is already here. This digital transformation is going to completely change the relationship with our customers, redefining our business model and giving us a path to the future. The network is key to help make this 20-year vision a reality. All right, as Darren explained, it's a great video and a great partnership with Ford and the city of Detroit. As Darren explained, the network is critical for Ford to change how cars are built, how they're used, and how they are enjoyed. Companies like Ford, they can reinvent their products, their processes, their business models, and quite frankly, their value to all of us. They can produce a chain reaction of possibility that goes through adjacent industries, not just cars, like emergency response, shipping, and of course, cities like Detroit. Now you can go visit the world of solutions to see the Cisco IoT operations dashboard, which enables you to deploy and maintain IoT assets by providing a detailed inventory of those assets that are connected and help you call out potential vulnerabilities, just like Liz was talking about. You know, Cisco also provides leadership around industrial IoT for mining, manufacturing, hospitality, healthcare, and more. We actually have been number one in connected utilities for the past four years. And I am so grateful to have Vincenzo Ranieri, who's CEO of distribution at Enel, here today as a first mover in the industry sector. Please help me in joining Vincenzo to the crowd. Great to have you on board. First of all, good morning to this amazing Cisco family. My first time, but I'm really impressed. Well, it's a huge uh, family. It's a big family. We're super happy to have you here. Thank you for taking the time. You actually flew in this morning just to be here with all of you today. Yeah. Very grateful for that. You know, you have been, Enel has been recognized as one of the world's most progressive energy suppliers in, in the world. You're pioneers in installing Italy's first wind farm, first solar power station, and the world's first smart meters. So you're really cutting the edge. So what is the future of energy really mean to you and Enel, and what are the challenges that you're facing with power grids today? Well, 
definitely the future, I, as we see as an L, but I think that now finally it's a common future that everywhere in Europe we see is the energy transition towards a decarbonized production where, and it's even more important, and I think that here is the perfect place to discuss about, where finally customers start to become active actors of the energy market. I can bet that none of you have ever a clue how to deal with their energy budget. For us, energy is like a commodity. It's like a bill. We have to pay a full stop. Is there a possibility to make even final households able to participate actively? That's our idea. Of course, to do that, uh, we had to start many years ago with our platform strategy. That's something that you cannot invent by chance in a while. You should start in advance. Uh, and a group that is quite huge everywhere in the world, we moved to, to full cloud at the beginning of 2019. And that was a cornerstone for our strategy. Basically, the idea is that how through digitalization we can connect services and devices that can interact each other in order to reshape the energy, the entire value chain, from final provider to technological provider to us, generation, and then final customer, it was possible with the idea to redesign an ecosystem that must be secure. And once we talk about security of supply, I think that Europe is experiencing how much, uh, as you said, critical are the infrastructure in this very moment in the entire Europe. So we have to be secure, reliable, and sustainable energy ecosystem. That must be, at the very end, but probably the most important, cost efficient for the final customer. That is the strategic priority that all the member states are having in this moment. Of course, infrastructure are per se the natural platform that nobody so far has think about the network, the infrastructure as the normal platform. So every time you s we talk about the white goods as a platform, we are a platform at least for three main reasons. First, because we are the most advanced infrastructure that the human being developed in, since the beginning. So network electrical grids are the most advanced in the world. Second, even the ecosystem is moving from a centralized system with huge, large, fossil fuel power plants uh, that were serving customers. Now we are completely reshaping the energy system because we have hundreds, I would say, million of small producers that are connected to distribution network. Think only that in Italy, only in Italy, we are connected active in this moment while we are talking 1.2 million small producers, just in Italy. The, 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 the question is, well, wonderful, we have new renewable resources and we, we like that, we want that for sustainable reason, but how complex is the management of the operation of the network? The world is changing because renewable are very nice, but are unpredictable. And here is the point, here is the challenge that we have as an infrastructure operator, how to reconsider, redesign the management of the network. And of course, there are three answers. The first one that is the most, uh, the, the priority one, we have to strengthen our infrastructure. We have to invest in new infrastructure even because we are a multiplicator of GDP in every country. Second, and this second uh, is uh, a condition, a factor of success for each of us, uh, is to, we have to reinvent or redigitalize the infrastructure. We have finally to move to the smart grids. You can even triple the investment, but without digitalizing the infrastructure in terms of management, active management, you will never succeed in managing millions of powers, power plants that are spreading everywhere in, in each single corner in Europe. And third, of course, to understand what does it mean to use a line that so far has been a vector of electrons only, now is vector of data. The smart meters that we, inst we are installing in Italy, we are the second generation in Italy. With the due respect for the other DSOs, we are the second generation. But this wonderful object uh, is able to manage every year 700,000 billion of data per year. Wow. Think how much value is behind those numbers, behind those data, but the point how to manage with advanced analytics, this kind of data. These are the three challenges that we have in front of us. I, I love it. I, I love how you ex talk about having this as a platform mm. for additional capabilities, and, and the scale to which you're talking about is, is utterly phenomenal. So clearly, technology plays a critical role along with going through digitalization for the energy sector. Tell me, 
what specifically, how are you using technology to drive sustainability? Obviously, energy is top of mind, I think, for everyone here in the room. How does that work for you, and how are we collaborating together? We started silently in 2014, when none was betting on smart grid. The first time I was talking to smart grid, to European institutions, they were laughing. It was something that they were, they were ignoring. You were one of the few that was trying to support our idea of smart grids. And we decided to make a project at regional scale in the southern Italy, where a lot of renewables were installed, with the idea that how we can maximize the production of renewables. Because again, many times, uh, everywhere in Europe, everywhere in USA, the problem is so-called curtailment. There is a lot of wind, a lot of production, but infrastructure is not able to absorb the infrastructure, the, uh, all the production. And basically, it's a, an opportunity cost that we are uh, giving up. The, how, well, the solution was smart grids. Because the idea of smart grids is to overcome the segregation between IT and OT. Yeah. Nevermore. Smart grids imply that IT and OT are managed together in order to consider the network as an active management system. Yeah. We are not anymore passive. We have to manage, what does it mean manage active management system? We have to modulate all the electrical flows in order to maximize the production. This is an indirect impact of sustainability. The other important is that we are, we, are, we are providing an essential service. And if we think what's happening now in Europe, we more than realize that electricity is vital for every economy. Yeah. What we have to do, we have to maximize the, 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 the quality of service to final customer. We have to have 100% of delivery in each single second of the day. This is possible thanks to smart grids. That's fantastic. Well, I, you know, I wish I had 20 minutes to go up here and talk through all of you. It's been absolutely great partnering with you over, over the last, since 2014. And, and we really look forward to continuing to help you as you continue pushing things forward. I just want to thank you one more time for coming up here. Thank, thank you, you, John. Shenzo. Great partner. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. This is uh, another impressive example of, of going all in with a digitalization strategy to totally redefine an entire industry. But we acknowledge that transformation is big, it's bold, and quite frankly, with a lot at stake, it can be downright frightening. Cisco is help, here to help you reduce the time, the cost, and the risk with the transformation that's happening in your business. As industries are modernizing, the world will depend on the internet more than ever before. Unfortunately, there are three billion people around the world who are either underserved or unconnected completely. And being on the wrong side of the digital divide means that you can have crippling effects that only compound over time for those individuals. And we are here to create an inclusive future for all. And so we must transform the economics of the internet Cisco's advancements in software and silicon and systems allow us to redefine the economics of the internet. Routed optical networking cuts the cost of building and operating networks in half. And in fact, we are confident those figures will improve over time with new additional investments in Silicon One. In fact, here in, the, in Europe, Deutsche Telekom is saving 90% in their IP core network from a power perspective than they were from the prior generation of their core IP infrastructure. And we also are now utilizing Cisco Silicon One both in the Catalyst portfolio as well as in the Nexus portfolio to go and enable sustainability to be further enhanced in those places in the network as well. Cisco is all in on simplifying IT everywhere and at every scale. That includes not just power plants and car factories, but also in our homes. And for many, including Cisco, hybrid work is critical to our business strategy because attendance is no longer a proxy for productivity. That requires enhancements and investments in collaboration, in networking, security, and in devices. To tell you more about hybrid work with Cisco, I'd like to welcome my good buddy, Javed Khan, up to the stage. Thank you, thank you, Jonathan. So here we are in 2023, and as Jonathan said, it's all about hybrid work. So how's hybrid work going for all of you? Going okay? 
Actually, let me ask a few questions. Let me see a, a show of hands. How many of you are offering uh, free pizza or food to get employees back in the office? I think I see a few people raising their hands. <laughs> you know, how many of you are actually tired of your boss trying to get you back in the office by offering free pizza? <laughs> right? a, a lot. Now, some of, some of this doesn't surprise me because hybrid work is still an experiment that uh, we are all st still learning from. And that's because hybrid work is both harder and different than how we worked in the last couple of years. Right? You, need to you need to rethink your employee experiences. You need to rethink your workspaces. And you must think about the new security attack surface. It seems to be expanding. So today, Tom and I are going to show you how Cisco can help solve for this. So as Jonathan mentioned, hybrid work cannot be solved in isolation. It requires cross-functional thinking. IT teams need to think about the tools that they need to support, manage, and deliver hybrid work experiences. HR needs to be involved with hybrid work because it's about who you are as a company. It's what your culture is. And facilities that needs to help you reimagine what your office looks like. So to be clear, hybrid work is not just about collaboration software. Collaboration software cannot solve this alone. It requires a holistic approach across networking, security, collaboration software, and hardware. That is the future of work. So what is Cisco doing to help address hybrid work? We are working on solution in three major areas. Firstly, we are reimagining workspaces everywhere, whether that's the home or the office. Second, we are optimizing collaboration across your ecosystem to enable new kinds of interactions. And finally, we are focused on making sure that your entire enterprise is protected end to end. So let me first start by talking about how we are helping our customers reimagine their workspaces. Now we all know campuses and offices are going to change forever. You're going to need new and different kinds of collaboration spaces. Conference rooms are going to require new kinds of configurations, and they are all going to need to be video enabled. You're going to have fewer dedicated spaces, and you're going to need new devices for open spaces, for hoteling. And at home, people are going to want the same or better experience than you have in the office. So how do you do this? That is what we've been focused on here in the collaboration group. We've built a whole new set of purpose-built collaboration devices. For the home, you could just use your headset and your camera with your laptop. Or we've got purpose-built devices like the Desk Mini, Desk Pro for advanced experiences. And for the office, we've always had a rich set of video collaboration devices. Now we've expanded that portfolio to include devices not just for the small and the large conference room, but new devices for open spaces and ideation spaces. Now, when you combine these devices with enterprise-grade connectivity across Meraki and DNA Center platforms, you get world-class experiences both for the home and in the office. Now, that's not all. We've taken this further. Our devices are interoperable with all other major platforms. They work with Zoom. They work with Microsoft Teams, Google Meet as well. Now, I know some of you are going to say, wait a minute, Javed, but I've got Microsoft Teams. But you know what? We still love you. That is why we just announced Cisco devices support for Microsoft Teams Room natively. So this gives you a choice, right? You can use the native WebEx experience, which allows you to join all those platforms, or you can use the Microsoft Teams Room experience. And with the Microsoft Teams Room experience, you can still join a WebEx meeting. So all that powerful AI that we've integrated into our devices the voice intelligence, the background noise removal that Liz loves. It will work with Microsoft Teams rooms as well. So in my humble opinion, and I'm a little biased, there's no real reason for you, for you to use any other competitor's video device equipment with your Microsoft Teams room ecosystem. And with Cisco Spaces, we are making our offices smarter. Cisco Spaces aggregates data across your collaboration devices and Catalyst and Meraki access points, switches, cameras. They all become sensors for things like occupancy, temperature, humidity. 
And this delivers great experience for your employees because they can see building occupancy, reserve a conference room, or just navigate their way around in case they are new to campus. And it's great for facilities and IT because they can optimize your real estate footprint, reduce energy consumption, and helps with sustainability. Now, we've heard from many of you, you love these amazing experiences we are delivering, but you need help setting that up. That is why we developed Cisco validated designs for hybrid workspaces. These designs are blueprints. They include, they're, they're based on our own experience setting up our New York City and Chicago offices, and they include things like devices, furniture, power, lighting, and a lot more. Now at Cisco, we are committed to helping preserve the planet for future generations. So innovations like Cisco Spaces and Cisco Validated Designs help with that. But there's a lot more that we are doing here at Cisco. Let's take a look. In line with Cisco's goal to reach net zero emissions across our value chain by 2040, we're building sustainability into our products, helping our customers reach their own sustainability targets. The first step is circular design. We strive to use recycled materials Designing products and packaging that are easy to repair, reuse, and recycle. Our products can also help customers decrease energy consumption. By using power over Ethernet connections in workspaces, it's possible to reduce the use of energy, copper, and steel. Our collaboration devices also incorporate features that enhance power saving, while our smart workspaces include environmental controls so resources can be monitored and used efficiently. Through hybrid work tools like hot desking, we help companies optimize real estate so they can continue to make sustainable decisions for their products and their employees. With intelligent, adaptive solutions, we're powering hybrid work sustainably. I'm really proud of what Cisco is doing here. Now, in addition to what you just saw, I'm happy to announce a preview of our latest innovation in WebEx Control Hub, Carbon Emissions Insights. It shows IT scope to CO2 emissions from their collaboration devices based on usage and consumption. It also recommends ways to save energy so you can set things like office hours and optimize and reduce your energy consumption. It also will show you a trending over time so you can see how you're doing. This new capability will be available in WebEx Control Hub, which is our centralized management console for all things WebEx later this year. So that was how we are reimagining workspaces. Let's talk about how we are helping you optimize collaboration. Collaboration is not just about meetings. There's a whole spectrum of interactions, all the way from phone calls, brainstorming, large events like these. Some of those interactions are synchronous, others are asynchronous. And these interactions involve employees, suppliers, frontline workers, and much more. That is why we built the WebEx suite. We announced it last year. It offers an amazing portfolio with all types of interactions. You get calling, messaging, meeting, whiteboard, webinars, events, and asynchronous video, all at a low, low price. Now, I know some of you are saying, but Javed, wait, I've got Microsoft Teams. You know what? We still love you. But here's what I'm going to tell you, that using WebEx alongside Microsoft Solution can actually make good business sense. Don't believe me? Let me show you how. So I suspect this is what your Microsoft ecosystem looks like. Right? I'm guessing you've got an E3 and an E5 license, but you probably have a different vendor you're paying for calling. Your marketing department's using a different set of tools for webinars and events. And you probably have a rogue business unit or two that's using a different tool for whiteboarding and polling. And you have yet another vendor for your hardware devices. Now my guess is that that is a lot of stuff that adds up to anywhere from 39 to 64 US dollars, and you think it's free. But WebEx, you get all of this at a low price, roughly 12 US dollars per, per employee per month. And it's all an integrated solution, solutions you cannot get from another single vendor. This means your employees get the best experience, and that's easier for IT to manage. Now that's not all. We took it one step further with the new Cisco Hybrid Works software of offer. It brings together collaboration software, networking, and security software into one single offer. That is the value of Cisco. 
Now, I've spoken a lot about delivering amazing collaboration experiences for your employees, but the same WebEx platform can also help you transform your customer experiences. In the last few years, with the advancement of digital tools, customer expectations have changed. Customers expect you to be proactive. Customers expect you to deliver personalized experiences. In fact, 72% of users we surveyed wanted to engage with brands on their terms. This means meeting your customers where they are. That's things like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, Apple, or sometimes just a phone call. But your customer experience mandate has not changed. You must maximize customer satisfaction while lowering cost. To successfully do this, you need both digital and human interactions. And that's exactly what our customer experience platform delivers and helps you do. So it starts with the same core WebEx platform that delivers all of the employee experiences. It forms the foundation for amazing customer experiences. It includes WebEx Connect for your digital interactions. We support more than a dozen different digital interactions. And when your customers need human interactions, we've got WebEx Contact Center. It gives agents visibility into previous digital interactions as well, so they can solve customer problems faster. Thousands of organizations are already using our platform. In fact, the WebEx Connect platform had more than 15 billion interactions last year. Now, what I've shown you today is just a part of an amazing journey we've been on the last few years, which brings me to the third pillar, the peace of mind that comes with Cisco end-to-end -end protection. And to tell you more about this, I'm thrilled to introduce our new leader for the security business unit and one of the best in the business, Tom Gillis. Tom? Thanks, Javed, and hello, everyone. I'm Tom, and I am the general manager for the security business group here at Cisco. Now, I'm new to Cisco, but not entirely. So I was the founder of a company called Ironport, was acquired by Cisco many years ago. And I chose to return to Cisco because I believe that we in the industry are on a period of significant transformation. You know, for decades, the way security worked is that a new threat would emerge, and there'd be a cluster of new companies that would spring up to counter that threat. But that put the burden on you, our customers, to ingest these new point solutions. And despite widespread adoption of these new technologies, both the frequency and severity of attacks like ransomware has increased dramatically. So we've got to take a different approach. And what I've found is that if you have an end-to-end -end view, if you can see from the point where a user clicks on a link to the point of access to the point where an application actually talks to the data, you lay out these puzzle pieces, the patterns become very, very clear. And we can figure out friend from foe. And so this is very much the vision behind the Cisco security cloud. Now, we live in a world where your infrastructure is going to have four basic flavors, three versions of public cloud and one of private infrastructure. And this is where your applications are going to run. And on top of this infrastructure, we already have software as a service, and platform as a service that is independent of those infrastructures. We think the industry needs another layer, a security layer, that is independent of the infrastructure, defined in software, but it provides that end-to-end -end view. And this is our vision of the Cisco Security Cloud. So it is a cloud-delivered software layer with a single login, a single intuitive end-user experience, and perhaps most importantly, a single set of telemetry that can see everything from the user click to the point of access, DNS, email, to the application interacting with the data. And so this provides comprehensive security that is built on the five pillars of our strategy. Network security, which is firewall and its modern derivatives, the ability to apply security at that point of access with SASE and SSE, a tool set that allows you to deliver zero trust across your entire enterprise. And more and more, you heard Liz talk about this, we're integrating security into the application design so we can move security further and further up the stack and move it into the what we call shift left. And the heart of all of our security is going to be around the intelligence that allows us to identify and stop these new and emerging threats. 
Now, we launched this concept a year ago. G2 had this vision of the security cloud. And one of the mandates was, let's make this stuff easy to use. Let's make it consumable so you can actually deploy it and realize value. And so when you look at what we've delivered, all of our products are built using a common design framework that we've inherited from the Rocky team. We call it a magnetic design framework. So whether you're setting up the security module on a Meraki system that Jonathan was talking about earlier, or if you're looking at the web security controls of Cisco Umbrella, or if you're looking at the more advanced security controls of SecureX, you're going to see a consistent, clean, intuitive interface where we take this complex kind of jumble of information and turn it into actionable data that you can use to protect your infrastructure. <clears throat> The security cloud is, used, is built using cloud-native applications, modern techniques. It's independent of infrastructure, heavy investment and emphasis on automation, AI, and machine learning, so we can identify friend from foe. And this is an important piece. It is open and extensible, because it would be way easier for me if you would buy all your security products from Cisco, but that may not be a realistic expectation. And so we realize we have to operate in a hybrid and a heterogeneous world, which means you're going to have security products from other vendors. And we work with those other vendors to create common interfaces, common standards around data models, so that we can put these pieces together and give you that end-to-end -end view. What we're announcing at the show is, is progress in each one of the five pillars that we talked about. I'm just going to call out two areas. The first is in network security. We've introduced new, very high-performance firewall appliances they offer very high performance levels, terrific price performance, and perhaps most importantly, we have returned to pre-pandemic availability levels so you can get this stuff where you need it. And I know this has been a big issue. We offer secure connectivity capabilities where we've had enhancements to, to the policies that we apply in our SASE and SSE. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some of the zero trust capabilities that we've implemented. Now, with our zero trust, we have the ability to leverage the biometrics on every major platform. So your Windows, your Apple, your iOS, your Android devices, fingerprint and scanning. We're not the only company that does that. Others do it too. But where we really shine is we take that biometric and authentication capability and we integrate it with what's almost a common sense type of policy. I'll walk you through how this works. If you're going to access, say, the corporate directory, we're going to ask you to authenticate, and we'll say, OK, great. We know it's Tom, and he's accessing the corporate directory from a device that we recognize and a place that we recognize. Once we have that authentication, if I go from the corporate directory to, say, Workday, you don't need to ask me again to authenticate. We know that these conditions haven't changed. And so we can remember that device and say, we don't need to bother the user with an additional authentication. Now let's imagine I shut my laptop down and I run down the street to a coffee shop and I open that laptop back up. It's still me, still my laptop, right? So it's still Tom, <clears throat> but we're able to identify, hey, wait a minute, something changed. We use Wi-Fi fingerprinting to recognize this is a new network. And so we're gonna ask the user, hey, could you just make sure that you really are who you say you are using those biometrics capability? And yep, it's Tom, and so we'll allow that to proceed logically. So these are policy-driven security controls that make the end user experience better because we're not constantly badgering you and asking you to authenticate. And of course, when we do this type of analysis, we're very, very sensitive to maintaining privacy. So we're not storing any location data or other privacy information. This is really fundamental to us. Now, because of the widespread use of multi-factor authentication, what we've seen is that attackers have taken advantage of what we call user fatigue where you're constantly being asked to authenticate, authenticate, authenticate over and over and over again. And so attackers are very clever, and they found a way to slip a fake authentication into that stream where a user just clicks yes, yes, yes all the time. Well, we have an answer for that. So if you're accessing a standard app, like for example, that corporate directory, we use the standard authentication process. But if I'm gonna access a sensitive application, maybe it's a source code, or maybe it's Microsoft Office, by policy, we have the ability to do what we call a verified push. So we're going to ask you to say, you know what? Let's make sure it's really you. Let's take the simple three or four digit code from the computer and type it in on your phone. And that way we can verify you really are going to the application 
that you said you were. <clears throat> and so it's a, really around making the end user experience seamless. We're going to frustrate the attackers and not the end users. This is an example of say, building security controls that are easy to consume, easy to use, and have that holistic end-to-end -end view. So at Cisco, we are all in on building these security controls and focusing on that end user usable experience. So summary, Java talked about the transformation of remote work. This is an amazing transformation that's happening all around us and giving everyone the opportunity to part of this global economy. We're building these products with sustainability in mind, and we're building security controls that are designed for this highly distributed, remote, and multi-cloud world. And we're building them in a way that you'll be able to turn them on and actually make them work. So we talk about usability. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Adela Trombetta, who is our uh, SVP of the customer experience for here at EMEA. Tom, and uh, wow, it's fantastic to be here and to see this incredible venue so full of interesting people and to hear about all the amazing innovation that is coming. But as head of customer experience in EMEA, what is really exciting to me is to hear again and again it is all about the experience. This is exactly what my team more than 6,000 people they care about. We are all in into the experience. Now, I have a question for you. Who in this room likes football? Come on, hands on, who does? Good, because I do, I'm sure that you do, and I do too. Now, my team, by the way, in Napoli, is leading the Serie A, and I remember, at the moment at least, and I remember last time, I was really young, and it was all about Maradona. This time, I'm still young, and it seems that Maradona could help us again. Now, whenever I think about football, a quote by Johan Cruyff comes to my mind. He said, playing football is simple. Playing simple football is the hardest thing there is. I love this quote because it reminds me what customer experience is really all about. We are living in very complicated times. Everything is changing so fast, and we can't make things easy always. But what we can do, we can make them feel easy to the people that we care about. And that makes all the difference. Think about Maradona, Pelé, Ronaldo, Messi. What do they have in common? They worked hard. They learned. They tried new things every day. And they, they played in a team. And the result of all of that is the beauty, the elegance that we all enjoy. They make football look easy. And back to our business, solving complex business challenges may be hard for us, but we should always make it look simple to our customers. Now, the question is, can we simplify, innovate, transform fast enough so that all the complexity will disappear behind the experience? Good news, the answer is yes. Yes, we can do that together. You and us, we can do that. And in the next few minutes, we are going to see how. But before I go there, let me first thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for choosing Cisco and Cisco Ecosystems. Now, back to the how. How do we create the magic together? We at Cisco, we are doing three things. First, we are simplifying our offerings, combining the best of human and digital. We help you, second, we help you transform your business with our digital learning platform. And finally, 
we innovate with you using our bespoke solution because we want to make you future ready. Now, I could talk for hours about the how and what we are delivering for you, but I promise I will not. Why? Because for us, what really matters is you. So let's see how one of our customers has embraced the possible. Roll the board. Let's go, City! Come on, you blues! Come on, City! This stadium is our home. Every corridor, staircase, walkway, and stand. It's where we support the best club in the world, week in and week out. But did you know behind the scenes is a huge network of invisible connections at play, making everything in our stadium tick making everything run seamlessly and making sure match day experience is the best it can possibly be. This is all Cisco, our partner. With Cisco, all ticketing on the network runs digitally, removing paper means a more efficient and environmentally friendly process, powering turnstile speeds and ensuring all phones are read for a seamless access. One scan and Bob's your uncle, you're in. Cashless payments are safer and quicker. These all rely on secure connections. It's as easy as tapping on and tucking in. Cisco even extends across the ground. Car number plate recognition is all now completely automated, so there's no chance of missing kickoff. We're being guided to our seats in the most efficient way possible. Cisco helps detect overcrowding, then actively disperses the flow of traffic safely, all fully automated. Thanks to Cisco, fans are better connected than ever before. High-speed secure Wi-Fi, need you even ask? You start wondering, what would a stadium be like without all this? It's pretty magical, really. Cisco Connect Stadiums. Look, even the logo's blue. They must be good. Please welcome the Chief Technology Officer of City Football Group, Greg Swimer. Hi, hi, thank you very much. Um, yeah, as you just heard, my name is Greg Swimer. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of City Football Group. It's an incredible pleasure uh, to be here with you all today. Let me say a little bit about uh, City Football Group. We're the world's leading owner and operator of football clubs. Uh, we have total, uh, the group has total or partial ownership of 12 clubs in 12 major cities around the world. And you can see all the logos uh, on the slide uh, above and behind me. Uh, we seek to empower better lives through football. And as well as doing that, we also deliver one of the most exciting and popular entertainment products in the world. Wherever you're from, and I know there's people in this room from, from all over the world, uh, many, many countries, football is an integral part of society. That tradition in, in most places goes back well over a century. Uh, and at CFG, we understand that. We see ourselves, we see our clubs as an integral part of the fabric of the communities in which we operate. And we work incredibly hard to be sustainable, to be give back to those communities and, and to work in a socially responsible way. And you might not think about connectivity necessarily as the first thing, but connectivity for us uh, is absolutely mission critical. So it's connectivity with the communities that we operate in, it's connectivity between these 12 wonderful clubs and it's connectivity with millions of fans uh, around the world and those that visit our stadia. And our partner for, for all things Cisco, and I guess uh, the reason why I'm here today, for all things connectivity, sorry, is Cisco. And uh, you know, very proud to be here. We, we as City Football Group are very proud of the relationship with Cisco, which stretches back now uh, over a decade. Now, the largest club um, in the group is Manchester City. Um, that happens to be, Manchester happens to be my hometown and Manchester City is my hometown club, my boyhood club. Uh, it's the club that I've supported all my life. Uh, I was uh, taken there by my father uh, going back into the 1970s when I was five years old. It's something that we've done together as a family and now uh, I attend the football with my kids. Uh, and it's something that really binds our family together as it does many families. Manchester City play in the English Premier League. Uh, in fact, we're the current Premier League champions and we've been champions uh, of the Premier League for four of the last five seasons. The club's home is the Etihad Stadium, which you see here uh, above me. 
uh, the Eti and which sits on the Etihad campus in East Manchester. Uh, that campus is also home to the City Football Academy, which houses our elite training facilities uh, for men's and women's football and our Boys and Girls Academy. You can see in this picture uh, Manchester just in the, in the distance behind you at the top left of, of that chart. Uh, so we're really close into the city centre. Uh, the Etihad campus, as well as all that, also contains our second stadium, the Academy Stadium. That's the home of our women's team. Uh, the women's team competes in the Women's Super League uh, in England and Manchester City is incredibly proud of having really played its part in the development of the women's football game uh, in the UK. Now, most of you might, well you won't recognise me, but you might recognise this guy uh, behind me, Erling Haaland. Um, football is the most popular sport in the world. It's the most watched sport on television. It's the number one sport on TV in 75% of major markets around the world. Within that, the Premier League is the most watched and most competitive league, uh, with a total TV, TV audience annually of over three billion. And within that, Manchester City have featured in four of the last five most watched Premier League games since 2018-19. So that brings with it a lot of people. Uh, we have over 120 million followers on our own social platforms, more than 800 million people around the world will say that they are interested or very interested or following Manchester City. So we are a club overall that demands the very best at all times in everything, and that absolutely includes te technology. In 2019, Cisco became uh, an official technology partner of City Football Group. That was Cisco's uh, first major a partnership with a football organization in the company's history, obviously something we're very proud of. Uh, but we use Cisco's networking and other key technologies really to run and support the entire operations of each one of our clubs and across the group. And whilst the commercial relationship with Cisco began in 2019, the actual relationship with Cisco stretches back well beyond that. Uh, 2013 was the first time we really deployed Cisco right the way across the Etihad Stadium and campus in Manchester, and we now rely on Cisco technology for everything we do. So let's talk about a football match. So around 30 times a year, sometimes a bit more, we stage uh, a game at the Etihad Stadium, a Premier League match, could be a Champions League match, could be another kind of cup game, and that means 50,000 fans coming and joining and enjoying at the stadium. We don't rest in the summer either. Um, this last summer we had Ed Sheeran playing four nights in our stadium. Uh, this summer we've got the small matter of Coldplay coming for four nights. So, you know, that brings with it pressure. For the technology team, it means the most intense kind of pressure. Everything has to go right. These are the moments that absolutely matter to everyone that's in that stadium, the fans, the team, uh, and everyone that's working there. So let me tell you just a little bit about what Cisco support for us on match day. Um, the network, first of all, the network swells to expand and uh, house and accommodate 50,000 people that want to get connected, keep in touch with friends and family. They want safe, fast connections, and we deliver that through Cisco technology. As you saw in the video, all of our ticketing is digital, 100%, so everything relies on NFC. In the run-up to kickoff, we will be ingressing more than 1,000 uh, fans a minute to get them all into the stadium quickly and safely. Everything has to be rock solid and reliable. Before they get to the turnstiles, many thousands will have visited our retail store. Uh, you see uh, here our, our lovely away kit for 22-23, one of the most popular kits we've ever had to date and powering record retail sales. Every transaction in that store, and in fact every transaction at the, across the entire stadium is contactless uh, via contactless payment. We have Cisco and Meraki cameras throughout the stadium. They help us monitor queue times at our food and beverage concessions, getting the right information to fans and also getting the right information to our operations team in real time. The game, of course, is carried out of the stadium on fiber and beamed around the world to the millions of people that we talked about in every corner of the globe. And then after the game, a quiet stadium again, but that's not, that's not just happened by accident. We've brought real-time information into the stadium for public transport, for our fans to help them get home. All the car parking is operated by AMPR, again, all relying uh, on the network. So all of this is supported by Cisco technology. Um, I've given you just a snapshot. I hope it was helpful. I know that there's an incredible number of incredible technology professionals in this room. You've all got your own uh, fascinating uh, challenges, every bit as important as the one that I, uh, I've just talked about. 
but at CFG, we certainly rely on Cisco, and I hope you all have a, a wonderful time at this conference. And with that, uh, I'd like to welcome Adele back on stage. <laughs> so, Greg, thank you very much. It was amazing and inspirational. I'm sure it was the same for our audience. And knowing that you will be very busy with the Champions League, that's for you. Oh, is thank you. <laughs> Thank is a much. good luck charm, but there is a but. This will not work if Manchester play against Napoli. Of course, will not. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you for so being much. With Thank, us. You, Thank you. And with that, I'm sure that you are ready for a fantastic close. So, Wendy, over to you. Thanks, Adele. So thank you very much, Adele, and thank you to all of our speakers today. Um, I think it's been a great kickoff keynote for us. And just very, uh, very quickly, a big thanks to our external speakers, so Vincenzo and also Greg from City Football Group. And thanks to all of you for being here uh, with us this morning. So I know we've got a fantastic week planned, and I know we're running slightly late, so I'm going to go quick. I welcome all of you back on Thursday, where we're going to have a fantastic session here uh, with a guest uh, that we've got joining us. I'm very much looking forward um, to that. So please do come back on Thursday where we'll have some strong discussion with the best referee in the world. I really look forward to it. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you all soon. All the best. Well, welcome back. We are so glad to have you back here in the studio. I am a very hoarse Steve Malter. It seems to be getting worse <laughs> by the moment, but fortunately I'm joined here in Studio A with the fabulous Nish Parker. Hello, I am, my friend. Hello, I'm excited that we get to be in the studio together. I know, and I apologize that this is the way that I have to do it, <laughs> but okay. it is what it is. All right, so we just came out of this brilliant keynote. We're so glad to have all of you with us on the stream, and I hope you loved what it is that you heard. So much great territory that we covered, right? So um, I just want to kind of kick out right away from what it is that we heard from Wendy right off the bat. She set up some core challenges for us, right? We're looking at geopolitical turmoil. There's war going on in the yeah. world right now, which we understand. Challenging economy, an energy crisis, an ongoing trouble with the supply chain, right? We're looking at a big gap in digital skills that we are all facing, and yet, what's so great about being together here in the room with one another is that we also have so much opportunity and so much untapped potential and that's so much of what Wendy really dived into and I thought it really started the keynote out on such a positive note even despite all the things that we're facing. Did you agree? Absolutely. I mean, I think everybody that's sat there in the keynote um, you know, space, everybody that's watching from home, you, I think everybody can relate to the challenges, right? The news that we see around the world and how technology has the potential to actually change that, make things better, help us move forward. Um, and I think that's what this show is all about, obviously using technology in practical ways to help us find new solutions. Um, Steve, I loved the industry storytelling focus oh, in the yes. sense of, you know, we heard from automotive, we heard from sports, retail, lots of different industries on how they're using technology to change their businesses and obviously how, you know, they're partnering with Cisco to do that. So I love seeing that. And obviously, you know, we've got that technology that's out there, it's practical, it's real, out in the world of solutions where we are. So I think, yeah, just having that combination of the keynote, the talks, the different sessions, it really brings it all together in the sense of what are we doing as Cisco as an organization? What's our technology? What's our portfolio? Portfolio, but then how does it make how is it real for customers right indeed I want to mention one other thing before we go back out to the uh, to the to the other spaces and the folks out on uh, remote Jonathan Davidson I right. love the way that he began he started by talking about this big cozy blanket of unified <laughs> experiences which I thought was amazing but then going to what you talked about in automotive for example right this great story from Ford this reinvention, this company that's over 100 years old and that the automobile is no longer about just getting from point A to point B. It's become such an integrated aspect of our lifestyle and the network is the key to making it all work, to take this vision that Ford has had over the past 20 years, convert, digitize the network to empower all of these additional capabilities. thought it was really exciting. Absolutely, and on top of that, obviously, anytime you mention network or any technology, security comes in that. So I love what Tom Gillis had to say, right, about making sure that it's secure and taking away from the 
gone are the days where a new threat pops up, a new company pops up, and right. it's one by one, right? It's not about battling each threat at a time, but having one holistic security strategy with, guess who, Cisco? Exactly. <laughs> Better than guess Cisco, Cisco, right? Um, and I loved what you talked about, about you know security as a network and really having that, so it's easy for our customers. And I think the key word here is experience, making it Amen. easy, simple, you know, so because we know that these things take time, they're high pressure, especially for the security teams. You don't want to be, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be facing some of the days that CISOs I know um, are facing. So Cisco can really help with that, and it's great to see. Indeed, innovation. indeed. So Nish, we're going to head on out to the Waz floor, and I think Rob Boyd is hanging out there. Rob, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine, Steve. I am out here on the Waz show floor. And listen, I want to point out a couple of things just to help keep everybody kind of focused on what's going on. Yes, we have the broadcast schedule and there's a lot of good stuff to take advantage of. If you come over to the Innovation Theater, which has got the big plant-based lettering there, I think they added the plants with the lettering. I don't think it grew there on its own. It's pretty dynamic. But this is where all the innovation talks are happening, as why it's called the Innovation Theater. And then over here on the schedule, we can see our very next session at 12 o'clock local time. All this stuff will be available on demand as well, simplifying network experiences. So this is just a quick and easy way to check down. As we look, we've got everything on tap for today. Now myself and the three co-hosts, we're all gonna be here between each of these sessions, making sure that, that uh, we bring a little bit more color, a little bit more interactivity. If you're not able to be here, hopefully this is a chance for you to experience what the event is like. And um, the one of the things I'm kind of curious about is that Cedric was supposed to be with me here, and he, he's not, and I'm, so I'm just, we're just going to take a look down over here. And so, okay, I see it. But Steve, why don't you swing around over here? I think we found Cedric. Cedric was talking about these smoothies, and apparently he's found one. So the refreshments are fantastic. What do you have there? Is that for me or for you? Well, I actually got one for you at the back as well, but this is like, I think it's strawberry. Like, it's really good. Like, um, so we're here at the Simplify Tea Zone right now, like, just like having this wonderful smoothie. Um, but actually, here you can get tours from Cisco Live, uh, from Cisco Live uh, 2023 Amsterdam. You can just get a tour through the world of solutions, explore um, what's going to happen here, what's happening here, who is here. Uh, we're going to take you also with us later on right now. Um, so yes, Rob, I mean, I'm going to get your smoothie right now. No, I want to get a smoothie as well because, <laughs> well, no wonder you didn't show up for the, the live really hit. Good. But good. Um, yeah, so we get here. This is the south end, I think, of the World of Solutions. All of the primary Cisco stuff you'll find along the right wall. And then all of the incredible ecosystem of partners, as you heard mentioned on the keynote, they are all here. They're ready to interact with you. They're ready to answer your questions. And what I love about this particular setup is if, if they're telling you that something can be done in conjunction with something over here, you got a chance to check it out and make sure it's real. So this should be great. Hey, back to you guys in the studio. We'll see you in a minute. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Rob. You know what? Um, uh, we're going to come up to a great interview in just a moment. Before we get to that, I want to briefly touch on what we heard from Tom Gillis around those five pillars of uh, Cisco Security Cloud. Right. Because security is everything. It has to be native to our capabilities, right, Nish? Mm -hmm. We cannot look at things in isolation and add security at the back end. So, the network security aspect of the firewall and that great new announcement that we have on up performance levels. We are back to pre-pandemic availability, which is incredibly exciting. Yes. Uh, secure connectivity on the SASE and the SSE side, zero trust, uh, cloud application security, threat detection and response. The fact that Cisco is so deeply embedded with making sure that, that security is in fact native to everything that we offer, I think it's a key differentiator and it's another great example of how Cisco really leads in the industry today. Absolutely, I mean, we've seen even when we're walking around the show floor, right, we have security everywhere. <laughs> Obviously yeah. we talk about it, right, in the sense of our portfolio, but you see it dotted into every demo that you see, how can we make it secure? I'm, mm -hmm. you know, over here in conversations, with customers asking our team here, and what about security? And obviously it's all built in, like you said, it's fully native. And um, we've got the Cisco Secure booth just behind us. Great coffee if you're here on site. Make sure you go and, and um, go there as well. And then we've also got security in the showcase. So, you know, we've got zero trust demos. I know passwordless is something that the team are talking about right. here at the show, um, as well as risk-based authentication and looking for changes in risk profiles. Um, so some really exciting announcements that the team are making here. You know, we heard it all in the keynote. 
And yeah, if you're here at the show, walk around, you know, see the World Solutions, we're going to bring it to you as well uh, for the broadcast. So. Every single bit of it, right? <clears throat> I'm wondering when we get to the point where security no longer has to be brought in as an add-in. When everybody just understands, no, it is a part of whatever you do. If you are working with Cisco on any level, whatever your capability happens to be, whatever contract you're under, whatever you're trying to accomplish, that Cisco is just guaranteeing that the security is part of it. Because that is the way that we create true hybrid, right? When we talk about work from home, work from anywhere, um, we even heard back in the keynote, take your laptop wherever you want to go. Well, we're not quite there yet. We're trying to get there, but once security is where it needs to be, which is what Cisco is leading the path on, then that's simply where we're going to go. I think we're going to head back out to the world of solutions. Uh, Rob, can, oh look, you've got a guest up in there. Rob, how you doing? I, I do, Avidly, actually, because what I wanted to find out more about is we've got the IoT operations dashboard, and as it was talked about in the keynote, this is one of a several platforms that probably the hottest area in terms of where Cisco is riding the growth of the industry because of all the solutions that we provide at all points along the way. But one of the hardest parts, I believe, in that is really how do you bring it together and operate it in a cohesive manner? And Eric, I wonder if you could just give us a minute on what's important to understand, what are you showing, what are people asking you about here? Yeah, absolutely, and, and thanks for the question. So Cisco IoT Operations Dashboard is really bringing together that IoT industrial networking portfolio, so we're able to manage our networking solutions from the cloud to really simplify that IT experience for our customers. And at the show this week, we've announced something that we call Secure Equipment Access Plus. This enables our customers to access equipment remotely from the cloud. And this is really resonating very well with customers. A lot of customers are interacting here on the stand, wanting to know how did they do that securely, how can they really simplify their operations, leverage the cloud. The other big announcement was Cisco CyberVision, which we've brought into our cloud platform. It's already available as an on-prem solution, but bring it to the cloud really helps simplify that for customers, and again, helps secure their operational network. And you know, with everything you hear about critical infrastructure, it's really, really important to keep that secure, and Cisco CyberVision is going to help our customers do that. That is awesome, Eric. Thank you for your time, and appreciate it. This is very interesting stuff, guys. In fact, this is just tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do in terms of industrial IoT, not just, I, the industrial part is, is highly specialized and has so many fascinating a, uh, assets to it, or, or facets, that's the word, of, fascinating facets. That's too much. But we'll go back to the studio and then we'll come back here in a moment. See that's, you guys. That's how you know, Rob, that you need a little extra smoothie. When you can't say the word facets, it means that you need to go pick up some sort of strawberry smoothie, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, but okay, so Nish, another thing that I really want to touch on, something yeah. that I think was so current, so on trend here in the talk from Liz Santoni, where she was talking about generative AI. Mm -hmm. We are facing a, it's a mogul of a transition into AI, right? Everything that we are doing, it feels like every two weeks, We've got new capabilities in AI, yes. which is incredibly exciting on the technology side, but it also brings up a world of potential threat exposure, and that exposure just becomes wider every single day, right? So she talked about enhancing use cases, everything from infrastructure to applications. Um, she talked about how we can troubleshoot and incorporate data interpretation, and what I really think was most important was um, security vulnerabilities management because I really think that is the big issue with AI. What have you been hearing? I mean, again, security, right? Yeah, security, <laughs> we're right back where we started, right? Yeah, I love what you said as well about um, hybrid work, and I, what I love that uh, Javed said, was he actually used a tangible example of bringing the cost down per dollar per employee, and I love that because it was really tangible in the sense of, obviously, you know, we talk about all these nice to have things, great experiences for employees, you know, obviously it has to be secure, that's not so much a nice to have, that we need that, sure. <laughs> that's our base level, right? <laughs> but then it actually comes down to the cost of it and actually being able to do that in a way where you create these hybrid work experiences that are amazing for employees and for the company, you know, better collaboration and at a cost where you're not breaking the bank. So I thought that was cool just to see that practical dollar example. Perfect, perfectly put. All right, so we're going to go back out to the world of solutions and I think we've got Cedric on deck. Cedric, can you hear me? Sort of. <laughs> Yes, Steve, I'm actually still enjoying my smoothie right now, right? Like you told Rob to still have the smoothie, but uh, I'm still enjoying mine. But I'm here at the Cisco Showcase. I am here on the Cisco on Cisco stand. I think this is awesome because we are, we are using our own technologies, of course, inside, inside our company. And I got some really cool information here about how we do that. The Cisco on Cisco stories are also available on the website, but I think it's cool to have it on the broadcast, Steve. 
So Cisco and Cisco, like we, as you know, we're a big company, a big American company. So we have about 81,000 employees worldwide that use WebEx on a daily basis, that connect with ent our enterprise networking portfolio on a, on a daily basis. And that, that team is distributed all over the world. As you can see, we have a good base here in uh, EMEA, in APJC, and in Americas, right? Uh, there is so much going on here. We have, we have, as you can see, so many routers, switches that are that are running every time. As I said, the collaboration portfolio is also so important because we were talking here about the the hybrid work, right? But that's what we do at Cisco every day and every day out. As I said this morning as well in the studio already, we just work from anywhere we're possible. We're gonna walk down the floor. We're gonna learn more about our collaboration tools later on. But I think this is just so awesome that we are using our own products and we just get our own internal feedback and we improve our products and so on. But I think, Steve, we're going to go back to you into the studio right now. Absolutely. Cedric, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, you know, one of the things I want to talk about, we, we heard so much about transitioning of IT, right? How can we not only empower IT today, but how does IT become a driver? for future capabilities. What have you been hearing on the IT side as far as, you know, for example, now sustainability, right? Yes. That IT is no longer just back end. IT now can create business opportunities. Let's talk about that for a moment. What have you been seeing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have the sustainability zone here, right? So people that are here can go and take a look. I know we're going to definitely be hopping in there. That. It's a very cool oh, area. Yes. It's very zen, isn't it? It's like a little garden in the middle of the world of solutions, which we love. Um, and we have sessions later as well. We have Denise Lee, who's our VP of Sustainability and Engineering. Right. He talks about how when we design a product and a solution right from the ground up, sustainability is built, is built into that and how companies can save on power and energy consumption. Um, we have the UCS X series that even has uh, individual components you can swap out so there's less e-waste. So if you need to sub something or swap something or upgrade something, you can do that easily. It's kind of like, a bit like Lego, you know, Steve. It sounds fun to play with, of although course, I'm not sure I can, but, um, but it just yeah, prevents e-waste. It stops, you know, you throwing something out and going for something new and still getting the innovation. So I thought that, you know, we've got some really creative um, solutions that we're, we're offering to customers to help Definitely. make them more sustainable and move towards net zero. You know, one of the other things that I kind of wanted to bring up <clears throat> was that, um, when it comes to IT operations in general, right? So again, on that sustainability track, you just said we're empowering a truly inclusive future for all, which is great. Cisco sits at that intersection, really, between sustainability and technology, which I think is very exciting. We're working to help businesses and IT to make much more informed choices in their journey towards sustainability goals. We heard so much about that in the keynote. We're going to see it across the show floor. So how can an enterprise think more holistically about their people, about their processes, about their technology elements? It's so important. Sustainability isn't just about risk and compliance. Like I just said a moment ago, it's becoming a driver of better business value. And I think it's really focused on improved operational efficiency, uh, better competitive differentiation, driving more innovation, driving more revenue growth for all of us. Um, and a great example of what we just heard, like IT departments, so much more powerful than ever. Key enablers of sustainable transformation. I think it's exciting, right Nish? Absolutely, and it is a journey as well, like you said, Steve. Like, you know, you really do have people that are really far along their journey at the beginning, and Cisco can help wherever you are. Yeah. So Rob, I know you're out in the world of solutions, right? All the Cisco showcase, I believe. So Rob, over to you, what are you going to show us? Sometimes when I travel, Nish, I miss my home office, you know, just everything that I've done to really personalize it and make it mine. But one thing about my home office is I use a lot of WebEx devices in here, some of which are represented, not all of them. I don't know if you can get a shot, Steve, around the corner here. I'm going to ask you guys, just keep talking. But looking over at this screen here, this is the new Desk Mini. These things come in a variety of colors, I believe, still at this point in time, but this is an awesome device because it actually, they build the power supply into these so that you don't have that big external brick around with it. There's literally a carry handle on it. So you got Wi-Fi and you depend on Wi-Fi perhaps in your home office, but yet maybe you want to work in the kitchen a little bit this day in your home library and another one. This is a great device for you as well. I'll have you back up a little bit here. And as we pan around, we'll come over. This is, I believe, either the WebEx Desk or the Desk Pro. They look very similar. The 1080p, that looks like it's probably the Desk. Oh, we're probably live with somebody else on the other end. We'll say hi. They got a live call back. Oh, we're probably someone else here on the show floor is what it looks like here. But this unit and being able to become an extension of your laptops, you have the great screen experience, the microphones, the camera. All of these things are about enabling this experience that allows you to be there 
without being there. And WebEx continues to invest in these devices to pull this off. One of the things that I've been on them about is, I did get advanced access to previous headphones, but these are the B&Os. These have been valuable. They're watching me closely, so I don't think I'm gonna get away with them here now, today. But I'll just note this, you know, for, for another moment. Look, people are staring in on us. Say hi, oh, they're like, what's that over there? There's like a camera on a camera, and we're, who knows? There's very stranger things going on here. But the point is, is what WebEx devices have done, and, and it's important to remember that the devices are just an intro into what is usually a very involved network and gonna be very unique in every situation. But they've got the ability to see, well, what is it like in context, this being the home office? There's other setups here as well that have the bigger board pro devices, for instance, new codecs, different things that continue to advance the game and set the bar, including the partnership with Microsoft that gives us the one button access no matter what. But with that, I'm gonna go back to the studio and I'll check back with you guys soon. Thank you so much, Rob. I really do appreciate it. Fantastic job down on there on the uh, World of Solutions show floor. And as I've been talking to my friends, a fantastic guest has joined me here in Studio A. I've got Chintan Patel here with me. Chintan is our Chief Technical Officer for Cisco UK and Ireland. Welcome, my friend. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Other than the voice, my energy is high. I'm feeling fantastic. I'm here with you, so you know, how can I be doing any better? We just wish this would come back, well, right? It's great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, so um, you are leading such a fantastic team of visionaries and technologists and specialists in areas that are truly affecting so much of what it is that all of us do, everybody who's here at the show, everyone tuning in. So. What are we talking about? Artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, IoT, blockchain, um, future workplaces, virtual reality, conversational interfaces, all these core aspects, elements, and opportunities that we have to transform our businesses, right? So I think the first thing that I want to talk about is what you heard in the keynote. We heard some new announcements. What are you most excited about? And what do you think our customers are most power, uh, uh, excited about in terms of these empowerments? Well, look, first and foremost, isn't it great to be back together again? Oh my gosh. I mean, the energy here is phenomenal. Uh, I mean, I've been speaking to customers and partners over the last 24 hours, and they've just been really excited to be together, to actually touch and feel the technology. I mean, that's something that we've missed. Uh, and actually, the announcements that we made earlier today uh, were fantastic and so well received, because it was not only about the technology innovation, but actually it was about the application of technology and what it does to ultimately deliver the experiences that we all care about. And you know, we heard from our customers on stage uh, how important these digital experiences are for them. So whether you're an energy company, whether you're a, a company that's flying people to a venue like this, EasyJet. Where Automotive people, manufacturers. Yeah, or if you traveled by car, um, or if you're into football, um, we had City Football Group on stage as well, yeah. talking about how, how critical the technology that we're building is so foundational to everything that they do to deliver the experiences that each and every one of us love. And you know, the, the, the one thing that I think has, has been um, amplified by the keynote and what we've announced is how critical digital infrastructure really is. You know, from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep and everything in between is powered by this technology. And, you know, we can't underestimate that. And I think that came out loud and clear in the keynote in terms of the innovation that Cisco's investing in, uh, what we're building and what we've got yet to come. And, and in many cases, you talked about a number of different sort of innovative technology areas uh, earlier on. You know, we're building now for things that we don't yet know are going to transpire in years ahead. And so building a scalable infrastructure, making sure that it's secure, making sure that it's easy to manage with simple IT, because the world is complex, uh, is, is the mission we're on. And we saw some great announcements around that. Look at what Jonathan was saying about where uh, mobile phones were 10 years ago. Where in the world do we think that they're going to be 10 years from now? It's opportunity. And really, that's, I think, what Wendy and what Liz both hit on so solidly is the opportunity that we're facing. We can make amazing things happen. Um, so I want to go a little further with the announcements and the ones that you think are really going to help businesses primarily in transforming and evolving. Is it about the fact that we are back to pre-pandemic demand? Is it that we are dealing with supply chain? Is it that we are opening up new capabilities that we didn't even know about the last time we were together three mm. years ago in Barcelona? What do you think is really standing out right now as the most actionable for everybody who's here at the event? Well, look, I think our customers are grappling with the plethora of things that they have to care about to deliver these digital experiences. That's centered around hybrid work. And we heard about hybrid work and how important that is. And it's still a big experiment. We don't know where it's going to go, but what we do know, it's here with us. 
and, and it will be for a long period of time. So how do we navigate that? What, what are the things that we can start to put in place to make it easier for organizations to deploy technology that enables their workforce to work from anywhere and be efficient and be productive? And you know, that's a hugely important aspect of every, every, every company going forward. Um, the threat landscape is fundamentally changing. You know, the more things that are being connected, and remember, anything that can be connected is being connected Absolutely. to the internet. Whether I like it or not, whether you like it or not, <laughs> it's happening. You know, we talked about the number of vehicles, 90 million vehicles on our connected platform today. You, you, we can see where that trajectory is going. Um, and, and as we do that, you know, there's a challenge for our customers in terms of this is just an incredible amount of things to manage. There's an incredible amount of um, threat actors who are potentially looking to exploit what you have connected to the internet. And so actually protecting this environment becomes hugely important, but it becomes increasingly complex in a very fragmented world. So what we announce around simplification around our security cloud to actually deliver some of these capabilities in a simple fashion becomes hugely important. So I think I'm really excited about those things in terms of how we're simplifying IT, we're making sure security is embedded from the start all the way from the application development to the infrastructure and into the assets that you no longer own. You know, in the pandemic, mm. we saw a big shift for organizations in terms of relying on public cloud and the internet for their networks and their workloads. Now, these mission critical experiences that we talk about, that we all care about, are now living in environments that our IT teams no longer own. How do you control the experience in a world which you don't own? And so the technology that we've announced around Thousand Eyes WAN Insights, yeah. you know, and application dynamics and, and everything there is about giving insights and visibility so that our customers can do more with less. So beautifully put. Chinchin, I wish we could keep talking for the next 20 minutes. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we're a bit behind going into the next talk, but please come back, visit us, Certainly share be. some more time. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Right now, we're going to take a quick jump out to Zero Trust. We've got a great, great, great tape coming up for you on Zero Trust. We're going to talk about, uh, 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 Rob Boyd is actually out there with Tom Gillis. We're going to send it back over.